The Meeples and Miniatures podcast is sponsored by Two Fat Lardies, Firestorm Games, and the very generous donations of you, the listener. Thank you to everybody for your continued support. Meeples and Miniatures, episode 263. Warhammer Underworlds, with hosts Neil Shook and Mike Hobbs, and guest Patreon backer David Matheson. This show was recorded on the 6th of March, 2019. Hello, dear listener, and welcome once again to another episode of the Meeples and Miniatures podcast, the show where we talk everything tabletop gaming. Tis I, Neil Shook, otherwise known sometimes as the Brewy Dwarf, and once again I am joined by my friend, compatriot, it is indeed the Welsh wizard himself. It is Mr. Michael Hobbs. Hello, Michael. How are you? Hello, Neil. I'm fine, thank you. It all is good here in sunny Wales. Well, I say sunny. We're right in it, down. <laughs> I was, I, I was going to say, it's like <laughs> you've obviously got different weather from what we've from what we got in the, in the middle of the country because it's, yeah, it's, it's oh. rattling down over here as well. Never mind. And for this evening's show, we have a special guest. It is Patreon of the show. All the way from the wilds of Scotland, where he is hunkered down in his very own bunker. Uh, or Shed? Shed? No. Not allowed to say shed. <laughs> <laughs> it is, of course... Mr. David Matheson. Hello, David. Welcome to the show. Hello, Neil. Hello, Mike. Hello, Hello. listener. Hello from a very wet Scotland. We're getting the same sort of weather as you guys by the sound of it. That's normal. It's normal for us, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty normal. Excellent stuff. So, David, welcome to the show. Um, David uh, had the... uh, the unfortunate event of being drawn out of the hat as uh, the, the next patron to uh, to be inflicted on the show uh, or have the show inflicted on him uh, so uh, so our commiserations to you david and i hope you get through this experience relatively unscathed well, I, i'm pretty sure we will i'm pretty sure we will um, i've been i've been looking forward to it with a, a sense of trepidation and excitement since uh, since i saw that my name had been pulled out of the hat uh, I did think at one point, I thought, oh my God, what have I done? But uh, now that I'm here, hopefully I won't send people to sleep. But yeah, I'm happy to give it a go anyway. Excellent stuff. It is great to have you on, mate. It is great to have Thank you on. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll be chatting to David throughout the show about different aspects of the hobby, things that he's up to, and and uh, some some things of his particular interest. But before we go any further, we need to find out a little bit more about you, sir. So... Uh, it's the age-old question that yeah. that new guests get on the show. <laughs> okay, so how on earth did you get into the tabletop gaming hobby? Well, probably at the risk of sounding like the proverbial broken record. Um, I mean, Airfix soldiers and and models, you know, featured pretty heavily back when I was a, a wee boy uh, back in my hometown of Brechin. I can't really remember what started me on the Airfix hobby, but Basically, you know, I had some toy soldiers, I had the, the tanks and the planes, etc. Um, but unlike a, a lot of your previous um, guests, um, there was never any war games club at, at my local school. Uh, Brecon's quite a small place, which is where I came from, and uh, 
Uh, the schools there were quite small and nobody had ever heard of wargaming as far as I was concerned. So really, it was probably as a result of two books and a magazine that really started me off on this this wargaming um, expedition. Um, the first book was A Bridge Too Far by Cornelius Ryan on the Market Garden campaign. I read that when I was about 12, 13. Mm-hmm. And round and round about the same time, the the Lord of the Rings, obviously. Um, I read that and was just absolutely bowled over by it. But um, the the magazine that's the seventy nine edition of Military Modeling Magazine. I've been in the Airfix magazine for for a few years, um, and obviously that was you know Airfix models and such again, as as I've said. Um, and I was going on holiday and. Um, saw this military modeling magazine in, in the news agents and I thought, oh, that would be quite interesting to, to have a read and see what the, what the story was with that. So uh, we picked that up and uh, went off on holiday and I read it from cover to cover. And in that magazine was an advert for Skytrex Limited, um, who were advertising these figures from America um, by a company called Heritage Incorporated, I think was the name. And uh, this company were m- making Lord of the Rings figures, which I just you know thought, hang on, somebody actually makes <laughs> models of these things. So um, I mean, uh, this was just a total revelation as far as I was concerned. Um, but so was the price. I mean, I was what as I say, twelve, thirteen at the time, and you know, I paid around in those days. You know, didn't pay too well, and uh, so my my income was fairly limited. And uh, I seem to remember that they. They were wanting the princely sum of two pounds forty-five for five models, which just sounded like an absolute fortune as far as I was concerned. So, so yeah, that wasn't really a, an option for me. But further on in the magazine was an advert for a company called Citadel Miniatures, and <laughs> in that uh, advert, you could um, write off to the company with your stamped address envelope, and they would send you a sample figure. So the said envelope was promptly dispatched as soon as we got back from holiday. When I say holiday, um, we went to a, a place called Carnoustie, which is about 14, 15 miles from Brecon, and actually not too far from our broth where, where I am just now. That's where we went to on holiday uh, in those days. My mum and dad didn't have a car, so we didn't go very far, but Carnoustie on the coast, so it was, a, it was always a holiday destination as far as we were concerned. Most but, uh, people will know Carnoustie because of, of the, the golf. The golf. Right, absolutely right. <laughs> absolutely right. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, the, the, the letter was dispatched off to Citadel, and a few days later, or whatever, the, the packet appeared. And in this packet was a wee model, which uh, I worked out was FA6 the, from their Fantasy Adventures range, and it was barred with sword and loot. And uh, <laughs> you can you can probably if you can see my little um, icon that is the said so, bard with sword and loot. Yeah, he still sits on my shelf up up in the up in the cabin. Uh, the very first metal figure I got, and basically that was it. I was hooked. I thought this was fantastic. It was obviously nothing like any of the Airfix figures that I had. So promptly more stamped address envelopes were sent off, and different figures came back. And then, of course, when um, Christmas came around, Santa was given the um, very long list of, of uh, figures that I'd spent hours debating on you know, how to build up my armies for the, the Lord of the Rings, etc. So the um, Citadel they were manufacturing their Alparthur um, figures under license, so they had all sorts of um, models that clearly were references to the Lord to the Lord of the Rings, but obviously they couldn't call them anything from the Lord of the Rings. So you, you had the guard of the Citadel and the 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 southern orcs and the uh, dwarves from the blue mountains and things like that. So um so yeah, I sent off a long list up the chimney to Santa, and uh, thankfully um he answered the call, and I received a whole pile of figures for Christmas that year. But again, you know, you know, I was in isolation. There was nobody round about that shared that interest, or or, or anyone at school. So really, my hobby didn't take off until I went to university at uh, Dundee in 1982. And um, lo and behold, there was the Dundee University War Games and Role Playing Society. So that was me. That was me on my roll then. My very first visit to the club saw me um, joining a Dungeons and Dragons game. And um, apparently, I caused some mild amusement when I um, drew, up, threw, drew up my character. And um, it was a paladin. And um, I equipped him with a 
a bastard sword, a long sword, a short sword, and a great sword. And somebody pointed out to me, I didn't really need to have that many swords as a starting character, but hey ho, I was having fun. Uh, and, it, and and so the hobby went from there. Uh, got into WRG Sixth Edition Ancients pretty soon after that. Kept that going, you know, throughout my university days. Um, then got a job. Uh, I'm a I'm a lawyer uh, to trade, so worked in Dundee for a year, uh, many years. Went to um, the local war games club, not in Dundee, but in a place called Kirrymuir, which again is not too far away. Uh, and attended the club there for for many years and played all sorts of games in different periods, Napoleonics, World War II. I've played a lot of magic over the years. I've, I've, I do that for my sins. But one of the one of my very first uh, experiences with, with wargaming um, was with the Hex Encounter games. I, I don't know if you guys really got into that, but I picked yeah. up some of those games quite early on. So again, going back to the Cornelius Ryan book, um, The Bridge Too Far, and again on another holiday, um, we went down to Dundee and uh, there was a shop there called John Menzies, which used to be a fairly large um, chain of news agents, primarily I think in Scotland. I don't know if they had any branches in England, but uh, they, they had a, a large range of, of um, shops throughout the country. And in Dundee, they had a particularly massive store and their toy their toy department was, was, oh, it was like Santa's Grotto. It was absolutely enormous. Um, and I remember going in there um, and... On one of the on one of the shelves were these box games, and on one of these boxes was a, a picture of these paratroopers, which I recognised from the Cornelius Ryan book. And the name of the game is called Arnhem, and uh, so that was it. I, I got me uh, my pocket money out and got that game purchased, and got it back, and opened the box, and here was all these little counters and this map, etc. And that was that. That was me hooked on hex and counter games. It's a classic. And, Absolutely. Yeah. I've got my sons playing it every so often. I've had a couple of games with my sons about that, and I've been trying to get more and more Hex Encounter games played uh, recently because I, I really do, you know, still find that you know one of the best parts of the hobby. You know, the the board games. I'm, I'm, I mean, I love my, my miniatures and uh, all my toys, etc. But uh, I still think there's something quite awesome about you know getting the map spread out and getting all the counters you know, laid out and things like that and playing these games. Um, that's really just uh, that does it for me, I'm afraid. So yeah, so that's you know that was how I started off, and um, I've kept it going ever since. Um, excellent stuff, excellent stuff. Okay, so uh, you said you kind of got into into it with Bushy Far and Lord of the Rings. So, leading question: as far as what you're what you're playing now is concerned. Okay, so currently, what are your uh, what is your game or rules of choice, and what's your favourite army? Oh gosh, what is my favourite army? Um, well, the last thing we, uh, we played was uh, we actually played some bolt action uh, this week. Me and my son, uh, my, my, my second oldest son, he's he's staying at home just now, so we played some bolt action, uh, which is 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 a good game. I mean, I enjoy it. We had a good laugh, etc. Rules of choice. Yeah, yeah, probably because bolt action's the one I've played most often uh, over the last few years. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've got Chain of Command. Um, I've, I think I've played it once with uh, with a mate from from the Kiddy Muir Club, and again thought it was great, but I've never really been able to get it back to the table. <sighs> Favorite army, um, probably my um, Uruk High Horde that I've got sitting on the shelves there. I got oh, the original. Talks. Yeah, I got the original Lord of the Rings strategy battle game when it came back. Came out well back in the what two thousand two thousand and one when the films were released, and uh, yeah. you know religiously collected all of the the books and manuals etc. and all the the sets when they came out. Uh, I've got quite a large Paint the Dora Kai army and quite a large Rohan army as well actually, and that's you know you know it goes without saying that that's obviously you know my favorite favorite sort of topic in the Lord of the Rings. So anything that involving the Lord of the Rings you know gets me every time. But um, yeah, Lord of the Rings, World War Two, you know, certainly would be my sort of preferred periods. Fantasy, generally, I think, probably is what I prefer to do rather than historical. I mean, I, I mean, I've always been his- interested in history, but uh, I think with fantasy, there's a, it is just that you can get away with anything in a, in a fantasy setup. Whereas um, with the historical things, I mean, I do get a wee bit um, put off by the, you know, the rivet counters and and all the rest of it. Um, 
so yeah, yeah, I think um, favorite rules currently bolt action simply because it's the one I've been playing most. Um, what I would really like to be doing more of is the um, the, the the new um, or the revised strategy battle game that GW brought out um, last year because we did play a, a lot of the original game back in the day uh, and the figures have been gathering dust for, for quite a while so I'd like to get the those guys back to the table uh, sooner rather than later but it involves me having to read the rules um, they haven't yeah. changed that much David I'll be honest. have they not? well I no. think that's good then Mike that's, that's yes. encouraging because uh, um, again you know being a lawyer um I tend to be left with the task of reading the rules because <laughs> that's my job is reading things and uh, and trying to interpret them. So um, so yeah, I, you can really call me a, a rules lawyer because that's what I see. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you took that line straight off me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, I I I prefer to to play a game, you know, under the tutelage of somebody else, and then once I've done that, then that's when I go back into I go back and look at the rule book and then sort of digest it. I think that's my preferred way of learning something, but that yeah. doesn't happen too often. You know, thankfully YouTube I'm does help. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but no, the, the the new strategy game, well worth having a look at. They've tightened up the armies quite Good, nicely, right. yeah, and it okay. it has got more of a thing now. You know, you are sort of gently persuaded to take a an army from one of the main sort of factions, shall we say. Uh, yeah. Instead okay. of just dropping everything in there because it looks tall. Cool. So, yeah. I mean, I, I did get the Gondor at War book, um, and uh, I mean, I've just not had a time and a chance to look at it, but uh, I mean, the one thing you've got to say about, you know, and we'll touch upon this later on, um, the GW products, I mean, they're, they're absolutely beautifully produced. I mean, their, yeah. their books are, you know, just a joy to to behold, to be honest, I mean, they really are, um, you know, well produced, you know, beautifully illustrated, you know, tomes. I mean, even if you haven't got, you know, that much of an interest in, you know, GW or the or you know the subject matter, I think you can't really fault them in the in the in the quality of the of their their books that they produce. I mean, they really are they really are quite something else. Oh yeah, especially over the last few years, they've really up their game. Oh, they have, they have, they have indeed, indeed, yeah, yeah. Mm. Excellent stuff, excellent stuff. Right, well, what we'll do now, we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, it is time to enter the confessional. Can I sit this one out? <laughs> I might be joining you, Mike. I might be. <laughs> Not on your lives, guys. I, I, I cannot wait to hear this one. <laughs> The Meeples and Miniatures podcast is very proud to be sponsored by the multi-award winning Two Fat Lardies. In the recent War Games Illustrated Awards, they were recognised no less than three times. Best Game of 2018, Chain of Command. Best New Game of 2018, Water Tanker. And were also recognised for their level of customer service. This award means that Chain of Command has actually won Best Game for two years running. And to celebrate this, Two Fat Lardies are running an award-winning sale on their website. With copies of the rules for Chain of Command, Sharp Practice, Water Tanker and Dux Britanniarum all reduced. So, if you have just the rules themselves, or perhaps a bundle including campaign books or scenario expansions check out the Two Fat Lardies website at twofatlardies.co.uk and whilst you're there why not pick up a copy of the Lard 2018 magazine a publication packed with scenarios campaigns articles interviews and reports and then don't forget to check out Lard Island News where Rich has posted a series of articles about creating your own jungle terrain. Award-winning rules, inspiring blog posts, and great spare time reading. You can find it all on the Two Fat Lardies website. twofatlardies.co.uk Play the period, not the rules.
Dearly beloved, we are gathered here on this solemn occasion to once again... Who are we kidding? We enjoy buying stuff. Yeah, that might. Yes. yes. <laughs> Indeed, I mean... <laughs> That's some, good, I, I, I mean, some bit. Well, yeah, say it's, it's at least it's one thing that we're all good at. Yes, and uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, yes, uh, yeah. I think um, uh, as we will find out. I mean, you know, people's OCD radar has been working on overtime uh, in the last few weeks. Uh, but I look for, I look forward I look forward to that story in a few minutes' time. Uh, <laughs> but first, I need uh, okay. We'll find out what what David's been up to uh, in, um, in 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 a couple of minutes, just to give time f- for him to, uh, if he's listening back to this, for him to kind of you know clear the room of anybody who doesn't need to listen to what he's. <laughs> yeah, uh, that uh, might be required. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so in the meantime, I will. Oh, what have I been up to? Uh, where were we? Oh, oh, crikey, hang on. It's the end. Oh, hang on. Where are we? Two weeks. Um. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's been yeah. It's been it's been a bit busy. Uh, and I, I, you, you know, when you you've had one of those times and you're actually at the point where you can't quite remember what you confessed to last time, Matt. Uh, and you bought <laughs> several bits since, and you're kind of thinking, did I talk about that or didn't I talk about that? Uh, right. Okay. So I'm deep in the mo- uh, I am deep in the depths of. Buying stuff for Rangers of the Shadow Deep. As we discussed on the previous show, the great thing about Rangers of the Shadow Deep is that it, it gives you the excuse to buy all sorts of stuff. Now, you know, if you're people on Buzz has things like like David, for example, who who's got a massive fantasy miniature collect, uh, collection, this is an ideal an ideal game for you because you can just go you can just pick the game up and just pluck miniatures off the shelves. However, yeah, um, here's the reason I am the, um, Ra- the Ranger of the Shadow book. Book is sitting on my um, desk there. <laughs> <laughs> excellent stuff, excellent stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you another one in a minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's been a brilliant excuse uh, as I've been going through the uh, uh, the list of of miniatures to say, okay, well, I haven't got one of those, and I haven't got one of these, so. I don't think the last time we talked about this, I had bought the Reaper Bones Ogres. Uh, I was, I don't think I talked about that. I I was looking for Ogres because in, uh, I think it's in the Burning Light campaign, uh, you need some Ogres. Or actually, it might even be in the back end mission of, uh, in, in the first half of the book. You you certainly need, uh, you certainly need at some point a couple of Ogres. And I was looking around at Ogres. They're big models, and so they tend to be quite expensive. However, the Reaper Bones ones are actually a decent price. They're only about like three pounds sixty, three pounds seventy for an ogre. Obviously, what you t- what you'll find with Reaper Bones miniatures is that obviously they're the, they're the Reaper figures. I you know a lot of the times they're they're just casts of what would previously the metal, but they're in this weird kind of plastic. Uh, so, okay, the, the details aren't quite as good, but, you know, rather than spending 20 quid on three ogres, you can get three ogres for under a tenner, yeah. which I can't, I'm, it's great as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so, and, they, and they've got, yeah, they're, they're actually really, you know, pose-wise and actual detail-wise, they're actually pretty decent. So I bought a couple of them, uh, and then got one for free because, f- f- stupidly enough, one of the models actually came, and it only had one arm. Uh, and it's like, and it's like, it's a blister pack. It's a two-armed. It, it, it's and it, the pose is, it's a two-armed ogre raising its club above its head. Okay, it's and each so each arm is like off at the um has a connection point at the elbow, and what's meant yeah. to happen is that you've got a club with two hands on it, and you just slot them into the elbows. I'm not quite sure. Where this uh, whoever packed it got it wrong and only put one arm in. It's just, it's just, it's just bizarre, <laughs> absolutely bizarre. Uh, hats off to Element Games because that's where I got them from, and they turned out. I, I sent, I, uh, I got, I, I got the blister. Immediately sent them an email with a picture, going, 
I think you know Houston. I think we have a problem, and they replaced it, no questions asked, and said thank you very much. We will uh, contact Reaper's quality control department and find out what the heck is going on. Which I thought, and uh, so yeah, uh, hats off to Element Games. Excellent customer service. Shout out to them straight away. Oh, that was it. We ended up in Firestorm a couple of weeks ago. Didn't didn't we, Mister Hobbs? Uh, we did. Yes, um, I did manage to avoid most things. Bought a little bit of paint. Um, bought some of the more, some more of the WizKids plastics range. You know, the, these are the uh, these are the, the same range that I got with the spiders, the giant spiders from the uh, uh, from a few weeks ago. And yeah. I was just looking at what they had in stock. And um, funny enough, I was looking for some. Uh, objective tokens for several of the games, you know, things like treasure tokens, and they actually do some plastic treasure tokens. So I ended up picking some of those up because I thought that might, that they they might come in useful as objective tokens. Although uh, what what I should have did just just done was actually end up getting the, the new saga ones that have just come out because they're really nice. But I didn't, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, they are really nice, and it's uh, yes, I think I uh, I think I perhaps did a false economy and. Um, yeah, that might get corrected sometime in the near future. Then got a pack of werewolves because, you know, Blue Moon uh, for Rangers of Shadow Deep, and oh, I haven't got enough werewolves, honest. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, but the whiskers, the whiskers werewolves are really nice, actually. They're uh, really cool. So got those, and then oh yeah, and then Hammerhead happened uh, the week after. I think I tweeted before we went on to Hamed, kind of basically saying, well, I'm not really looking for a lot. Oh, that's always fatal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, okay, well, I'll have a look and see, you know, what people have got, basically. Yeah, because it's like, well, oh, correction. I, there was one thing I was after, which um, obviously, again, from our discussion with uh, with Mr. Slade the other week, um, yes, I was after uh, not a pelican, but a vulture. Uh, and <laughs> and he put me uh, and he put me he, he put me on to the fact that uh, Colonel Bills um, had one in their range of animals, which is actually it's a really nice range of figures actually in their animals range. Uh, but I, I, that's the one thing I was after. I was after, I was after a couple of vultures. So found those. I thought, oh, um, I'll buy a cart because I haven't actually got like a medieval cart. Well, correct. I suppose I've got some because I've got the 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 cart packs for Saga. Uh, yeah, but I kind of thought, well, usually you kind of put those together with the people, and I thought, well, uh, let's just let's just yeah, you know, just, just get something separate. But it's freestanding, you know. Then, as we were wandering around, happened to notice that Foundry had about f- three or four of their racks were all on offer. They were selling all their blister or um it's essentially um a load of their older um, a load of their older stock. They were oh. selling it all off at half price. All sorts of kit, all sorts of kit, but included in that was a lot of their fantasy figures. And which uh, are lovely. Which are lovely. Uh and I thought, oh I'll just have a quick look. You know. Uh see yeah, see if I can see if I spot anything. Now I think I previously discussed. I I bought um, a box set of Frostgrave soldiers to make you know to do rangers, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but you know, in the back of my mind, there is that there is that you wouldn't have been happy, would you? Because they because they ain't got any capes. Exactly. <laughs> What's the phrase? <laughs> What's the phrase? No capes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yes, and and, and yeah. of course, and of course, everybody knows. Everybody knows that uh, or any ranger worth his salt is going to have a hooded cape. Oh yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. Indeed, which is the law. <laughs> and it just so happened that I came across several blister packs that they were selling of their uh, of rangers or ranger scouts. I think they are. Uh, so they had uh, a set of archers, they had a set um, of what they called warriors, which was basically rangers with hand weapons, or not bows, and then, uh, and then they had a character pack. So, oh, this is, this is new, this is interesting. Uh, and, you know, of course, the big thing is, they all had capes. Excellent. So, yeah, I didn't need them at all, 
and ended up buying three blisters of Rangers. <laughs> the only, I think, the only downside, I think, is the fact that they are most definitely at the twenty-eight mil end of the uh, of the twenty-eight to thirty-two mil figure scale. So they're potentially. Uh, well, yes, they are. They are at, at the end of the range before scale uh, scale creep started. So they are they are on the smaller side uh, of the twenty eight mil divide. But yeah, lovely, fine. But, well, um, yeah, lovely. People lovely. are different sizes, Neil. I mean, you've yeah. got to just accept that. You know but, that uh, they all come in different shapes and forms. So this is yeah. it. And 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 the, 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 there are some really there are some really nice poses in them. Uh, so I was I was pleased with that. And then so that was. I thought, great. Okay, found something unusual. I'm sorted. Now, I'm with Mr. Hickman. Mr. Hickman has an idea. Yeah. <laughs> and we, I mean, we were chatting about this in the car on the way up, and he was kind of going, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of buying some Perry's. You know, these box sets we discussed previously, Mr. Hobbs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking of buying some Perry's. <laughs> really, says I. So when, so when are these going to get painted? Oh, you know, I just, I, just, I just thought I'd get a hold of some. You know. Oh, okay. Well, just in case they go off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, or you and... can't get them after Brexit. <laughs> oh, that is true. <laughs> any, and any, and uh, so... And, of course, it wasn't helped for the fact that the first thing we did was go to see Mr. Slade. And uh, this plan might have been mentioned. And uh, the first, and, and then Mr. Slade just gives away the fact that uh, Mr. Thomas is, is, uh, is at Hammerhead with his usual store and has his <laughs> usual offer of uh, three boxes of Perry's for 50 quid. Well, you, could, well, you couldn't see Mr. Hickman for dust. <laughs> uh, well, correction. That was that was after he had his coffee, and his, his yeah. coffee and uh, sausage sandwich. Uh, anyway, after that, you know, he was he was off, and he, he was dragging me behind him. He was dragging me behind him, and and we got there, and it's like, so he's buying three boxes, and it is it is for um, War of the Roses. This is War of the Roses. Yes, this is this is this is the <laughs> this is the buy one box, share them between you, and see how you get yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. We are now both a proud owner of uh, three boxes of Perry's. Uh, we did actually, re- we did actually resist because he was he was seriously looking at saying, "Okay, well, while we're here, shall we get the other three boxes?" Because obviously, there's there's. Uh, I mean, we got two boxes of Billman and Archers and a, and a box of Fortnites. Uh, and he said, "Well, we can share a box of Fortnites between." So I actually. Yeah, if if we got three units, I mean that's thirty miniatures. Yeah, we, we really need a box each. And then you know I had to talk him out of thinking. Well, okay, let's not buy any mounted miniatures to begin with because we, especially two of the strongest, you only have one set of mounted units. And then, yeah, uh, and then you know, no, you're you're Yorkist. You don't really need the mercenaries. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mercenaries are lovely figures. Uh, they are, the, the, yeah, they are lovely. The, the, uh, they are lovely, but 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 of course, you know, um, they're, yeah, they're kind of more the uh, they're more the Lancastrian side of things, I think. Um, yeah. So uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, uh, yes, Perry's were bought, and as I was explaining just before we started recording this bit, not ten minutes. Not ten minutes after I had done this, we were back confessing to Mister Slade what we'd just done, what what Mister Hitman had made me do, and uh, we, we, I mean we're bumping into people all day. It's, it's a great day. Uh, you know, I mean, hi, thanks to everybody who came over and said hi. I, I had a great time. Um, and Mervin, thanks for the cake. Uh, even though you didn't uh, give what? It... Hang on, <laughs> let's go back to that. What? Oh, it's <laughs> cake. It's... Yeah, the, yes, the lemon drizzle cake. It's it's a tradition, don't you? Uh-huh. It's, it's a tradition, don't you know? I mean, yeah, the fact that he the fact that he'd had to give half of it to Mister Whitaker was a bit of a blow. Uh, but because <laughs> 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 he thought just turning up to Mister Whitaker and asking for his uh, um, Howard the Howard the Wake miniature from three years ago, which uh, 
uh, <laughs> which Mike had bought to, bought for, bought down for him. He said, um, yeah, "Yeah, it's like yeah, it's, it seems a bit, you know, it seems a bit off if I just ask for that miniature and I and I haven't got anything for him." So you know, <laughs> <clears throat> yes. So uh, anyway, so there I am. This this is before cake, but you know, and we're, and we're chatting and we, and we bump into. Uh, there's loads of people congregated around uh, Matt. I mean, hello Ed. Uh, bumped into a burn and uh, and then and bumped into Carl Burke and um, he said we were chatting about what you bought. He said, "Hang on a second, you said you you, you just said you you'd bought Perry's." Yes. I said, "Hang on, I've just listened to your latest Patreon <laughs> show where you categorically stated that you weren't going to buy them yet." <laughs> So thanks for that, Carl. Uh, hoisted by my own petard. Whose stupid idea was it to record stuff that we say? <laughs> uh, yours. Your yeah, yes, 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 indeed. So, uh, so yes, um, yes, guilty as charged. So other than that, uh, what we've got, uh, back to a couple of Kickstarters. We've got, uh, uh all the new, uh, the new Killforth game, Shadows Over Killforth, uh, was launched a few days ago. So back that. Interesting one I saw this morning. Uh, there's a company, I well, can't quite remember who they're called, but they had a, a had a. It's, it's a French company. Uh, they apparently they they did an app for Kill Team, and they've just advertised oh uh, d- to do an app for for easily producing battle reports, and if you got in early, you basically got it for, for like. Five euros. Uh, so, you, so essentially, you're backing it, and and when you back it, you get a voucher. Uh, so, when you go to the Google Store, you just key in the voucher code, and you'll get. Uh, you know, when that quick, when they release it, you'll get. Um, you know, I think I think this is like sixty, like two thirds off or whatever it is, and that was really interesting. So, uh, yeah, I ended up backing that this morning. Uh, and that is, you know, uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that'll do for now. Uh, I'm sure there's other stuff which, oh yes, I um, just bought the, uh, I, I actually bought, I have just bought a, a hard copy of Rangers of Shadow Deep. The wolf movie, the, the, the werewolf one. Uh, so they're currently winging their way to me because with the fact that after the last show, you guys convinced me that I really should own a hard copy of it as well. Indeed. So, indeed. So yeah, I think that's oh, and then and then, <laughs> and then just, having just yes, more. and there's, oops, wait, there's more. Uh, yes, uh, so um, uh, and then finally having got home with the Rangers, with the Rangers, and uh, uh, quirky. I mean, the following day, I'd op- I was opening basing and and undercoating the, the Rangers. Uh, having just bought them, I mean, this is this is yeah, I know this is this is this is this is unheard of. I, I, I don't know what's come over me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I went. Oh yeah, um, villagers, villagers. But yeah, because you need some villagers for, for for a couple of the scenarios. Now, I'd always intended on using the the villagers that came in the Mythic Battles Conan expansion because mm-hmm. they're not really useful for much else. Because uh, they're not really used in Mythic Battles much, and they don't look particularly Greek. Uh, so, but I thought, oh, yeah, they, they look kind of vaguely medieval, or you know. So I thought, I'll use some of those. So dug some of those out the uh, out the box, put put them on the painting table, and went. Well, that's no blooming good. They're huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they must be about. They must be close to thirty-four mil. <laughs> and of course, having just said, yeah, yeah, the 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 foundry stuff is quite on the small side. These huge pigging. I mean, you know, basically, the the child is 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 almost the size of a twenty eight mil miniature. It's like, oh my word. So yeah, um, so I thought oh, I'm gonna have to buy some villagers. Now somebody somebody suggested. I mean, somebody said, said, well, why don't you just? Oh, it was, oh, it was David from uh, from Kansas. Hello, David. Uh, suggested that uh, why don't you just use the uh, the Gangs of Rome mob miniatures that you've got as villagers? What madness is this? <laughs> Roman? <laughs> Roman villagers, Neil? 
good grief. I mean, you know, have you seen the clothes they're wearing? They catch the death of cold <laughs> in that climate. Uh, so no, I um, I uh, I ended up getting a I ended up getting, getting a couple of packs of villages from Gripping Beast, which you know was ironic considering Gripping Beast for the first time we were at Hammerhead, and I completely failed to um, to buy anything from Gripping Beast whilst at Hammerhead, and then. The day it was in Monday, basically, I was on I was on their website ordering stuff. <laughs> <sighs> I will never learn. Okay, that is me. Fine. Oh, good grief! Look at the time. Oh, I've been wittering on for ages. Why have you kept me talking for this long? <laughs> David, David, please say say save our uh, listeners and butt in and tell us what have you been up to recently? What's what's been gracing your your shopping cart? Well, I, I uh, the shopping cart, yeah, the shopping cart's been pretty full uh, over the last couple of weeks. Anyway, I pre-ordered the Journeys to Middle Earth from Fantasy Flight because it's Middle Earth, and yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, had yeah. to be. And yeah, I also yeah. Got it was the, it was uh, interesting to because uh, uh, they, they finally published an update. Uh, they finally published yeah. an update on that the other day, didn't they? Yeah, and so, that, yeah, yeah. so that's on pre-order. As is the 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 battle mat because uh, I just thought, well, why not? So. um Although I ordered the where did you get the battle map from? Eh, I'm getting that from. I'm looking at my note. Um, where did I order that from? Uh, Board Game Hut, an online place here called Board Game Hut. Um, they had it in stock at a reasonably decent price, so um, I pre-ordered it from them. Oh, and, my and, word! I'm not because I'm not. I'm, ooh, I'm not. Found yeah, that. I struggled ooh. to find it as well, but they 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 had it in stock, or at least or they. They said they were getting it in stock, obviously because it's pre-ordered. But uh, so yeah, I got it from there. But the game itself, I've ordered from Chaos Cards, because again they were um, reasonably uh, priced. So um, so yeah, they're on pre-order. When are they? When's it due out? Is it second quarter? It's second quarter. Yeah, second quarter. They haven't put an actual date on it, but at the moment they're just saying, well, it's, it's typical fantasy flight, isn't it? It's kind of oh yeah, second yeah, quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, so that's done. Uh, Mr. Hobbs, I blame you for the next purchase because um, you tweeted Welcome. about the Foundry sale, uh, which was going to include their paints. So, um, yeah, uh, 10 triads later, um, <laughs> I've got some paints from Foundry. But, but obviously, I needed them. Um, so, yeah. yeah, so they, they arrived. Actually, uh, Neil, I, I remember you said that you'd bought some paints from Foundry and they'd sent you a, a horse's painting guide. Yes. Apparently, they send it with all their paints just now. So, um so oh, they weren't okay. singling you out for any special treatment. Oh, I I don't feel quite so bad. Um, yeah, after listening to you guys, but I'm also in fairness, listening to Joe McCulloch and his battle chat with Henry. Um, yeah, I was I was, I was sold on the, the Rangers book, so I got that the hardback book and the PDF, and also the Blood Moon campaign book. Um, because, like you say, I mean, you can use any sort of figures for it, and uh, I do have lots of any sorts of figures, so. Hopefully that's something we'll get to the table before too long. Rebels and Patriots rulebook from Osprey. Um, not that because I'm a particular fan of, of that period, but I do quite like Dan, Dan Mercy's rules. I've got his Line Rampant, Ra- Line Rampant and other books that he's done for Osprey. So, again, being one of these you know people who likes to have complete sets of things, I felt I just had to, to order that. Um and at the same time, I got the, um, this was from Books, etc. Um, so they had um, Jared Blando's Fantasy Art and RPG Maps book uh, at, a, again, very reasonable price. And I'd heard um, Sidney Roundwood speaking to, to Henry about that. Or was it, or was it to you? I know, it wasn't not to Henry. It was to, it was, us. It was on the Oddcast. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was on the Oddcast. Yeah. That was yeah. on the Oddcast. He was speaking about it. And again, I mean, drawing my own maps is something that I've always done since, you know, since the early days. And, Again, never been particularly good at it, but it's always something that I've enjoyed doing. So, yeah, it's a it's a nice wee book. Um, still don't have a proper look through it, but it's it's um, it's looking quite promising from from that point of view. So, so yeah, so that's arrived. I also got the Ardennes Forty Four um, board game from GMT Games. I'd had that on P five hundred order for what seemed like an age, um, and that eventually arrived um, a couple of weeks ago, together with the mounted maps that they were doing separately. So. So that'll um, have to be cracked open and, and got to the table at some point. I'll get the boys playing with that. The Ghost of Framsburg expansion pack for Lord of the Rings living card game. I managed to tra- track down a pack of that. Have you got that yet, Neil? I haven't. I mean, the, uh, and actually, uh, the one thing with that, I mean, I mean, the good news is 
is that uh, they have been reprinting yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of the uh, a, a lot of the the uh, the packs of the Lord of the Rings card game because uh, obviously m- most of them have been out of stock for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm. I I've am... managed to keep on top of it and keep. Uh, I mean, for a while I didn't. I wasn't picking up the packs, and then of course you then have a panic that you know, oh my god, they're not they're not, they're going out of stock. So I, I've managed to keep up to date with it. But uh, when I knew this one was coming out, I went to my usual haunts like Magic Madhouse and Chaos Cards and places like that, and they were all out of stock. I thought, oh no. Um, but uh, I f- found it on eBay again at a half decent price with no postage. So, so yeah, I got I got that. So that's arrived as well. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, that... I'm still massively behind in my in my Lord of the Rings card game stuff. I've got I've got a whole cycle. I've got the uh, the the Dream Chaser cycle to get, and uh... that was quite a difficult one. It did yeah. out of stock for quite a while. Uh, again, I was just lucky that uh, I managed to find the first the the the. the um, the deluxe box, and then and then the expansions after that. That uh, yeah, I, I've sort of decided. And I, again, I don't know whether you know with journeys coming, whether that's sort of the death knell for the for the the physical card game. And obviously, they've got the digital card game. I've not tried that. I know you guys have downloaded it. And, and are you still playing it, or is it? You know, have you? Have you? No, it's not. It's not uh, really something I've revisited to be honest. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I much prefer the physical uh, the, the physical card game. Yeah, yeah, likewise. But I mean, they haven't announced any new saga expansion um, or deluxe expansion for the. I mean, the the next, the fifth set for this current set has been announced. But you know, normally by this time they're talking about the next deluxe expansion. Yeah, I've not seen any um, announcements for that. Yeah, they 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 do appear to slow down on it. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, it wouldn't surprise because I mean, let's face it, even the exi- I mean, the existing collection is. Fairly huge. Yeah, it's now. huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it takes up a, an entire cupboard in my in the cabin. It has to be said. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to run out of space for for yeah. that as well. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I think I did it because I was I was thinking, okay, how many card, how many card sleeves do I need for this? And it's uh, I think I think that the whole collection runs to about five and a half thousand cards or something cheap. Uh, yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. just say that quickly. Just, <laughs> just, just not think about how how much stuff I've actually got for this. Yeah, I, actually, that was one thing I, I was slightly disappointed with, with journeys is that they seem to be using reusing a lot of the art from the card game. I don't know if you noticed that. I was, I mean, I, I must admit, I, I was kind of expecting it because let's face it, the amount of artwork that they've got available. And yeah. people, and yeah. of course, yeah, lo- of course, and of course, loads of people would not. Uh, you know, if if you're not into the card game, you wouldn't have seen it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That is very so, true. So I, I, I actually quite like the fact that it kind of gives. You know, for, for those people who are fantasy flight Lord of the Rings players, it kind of gives continuity because, funny enough, they do exactly the same with their um, with all their Call of Cthulhu stuff. Oh so yeah, like, okay. So like all all the all the character are in Call of Cthulhu, whether you're playing the card game, whether you're playing Mansions of Madness, whether you're playing uh, Elder Sign, the that uh, the artwork for the characters and stuff keeps cropping up. Uh, so it's it's kind of I mean okay, artwork's expensive and stuff, but it also kind of gives a familiarity and a continuity to the whole thing so i must admit that didn't bother me so much i, I almost found that as a as it was almost like a slight bonus because it's like oh right, yeah i know yeah you kind of know where you are and of course it's lovely it is i mean yeah and, and in fairness i mean the, the artwork is pretty special with the with it so yeah okay well, i can i can forgive him that then from that point of view but it did make me wonder whether you know maybe that was a sign that perhaps the, the card game was was Either you know being slowed down or it possibly on its way. It wouldn't surprise me in the least if they did. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, certainly my shelves would probably be quite thankful for it. In the <laughs> um. Okay. What else? Um. Picked up uh, the washer set from Army Painter. Um. Yeah. I've, uh, I I got some twenty eight mil World War Two French for from Santa last year, and uh, I was watching a video. Um. Is it the the War Gamer? Um, he does videos on YouTube, uh, painting videos, and um, he was using um, military shader wash for the for the French infantry guys. And I thought, oh, I don't have that, so I thought, oh, they do a, a, a they do a set. Oh, well, 
why not just get the set rather than just the one bottle i mean it's seemed sensible to me so i, I picked up a set of those and then yeah i quite like that uh, them, uh, i haven't used all the colors yet but um i quite like the the, the effect they they give for the model so so that was that that was fine um what else did i uh, um red alert commands and color it's due to arrive soon but I mean that was that was paid for years ago, but um, it's it's due to arrive sometime this month, I think, from what PSC yes, have been saying on the. Yes, they've just got. To, yes, they've been showing, displaying this will with the that huge box in his arms. It's a huge box, and it, and it looks like a huge, huge. You know, well, it's not really a board because I think it's a mat and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a mat. Yeah, yeah. I, I was when we saw it at I think we saw it at the Games Expo last uh, last year, and um, it, it was like, yeah. oh my word, that's huge. <laughs> Because it's it's it is something like five by three. It's 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 a big it's a big. It's mat. a big big game. Cool, yeah. cool. I'm looking forward to that. Then. I mean, I, again, and this is your fault, Mister Shook. Uh, you know, when I started listening to you way back in the day, and you started talking about commands and colors. Yeah, yeah. So I have all of the commands and colors, the ancients and Napoleon. So except for one, and that's the epic expansion for ancients, which. Um, they still haven't managed to get to the 500 on, the, on GMT's list. So, um, listener, if you're out there and you're a Commands and Colour fan, get it pre-ordered. I want that copy as soon as possible. And it, it's been on the pre-order list for, oh, it seems like about three yeah. years now. So, yeah, it's, it's the gaping hole in, in the Commands and Colours collection for me. So I would really like to it's, try and get it's that. It's been on P500 almost as long as Command and Colors Medieval. Ah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, again, I'm sitting waiting for that to arrive. Um, I've got that on P500, and uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> medieval. Uh, it's not really medieval when it's because it's Byzantines and Persians, but that, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you know, as soon as I saw it was Byzantines, that was it. That that was me sold because my first <laughs> WRG army was was a 15 mil Byzantine army from. Asgard miniatures um, way back in the day, so I've always been a bit of a, a Byzantine fan from that point of view. So yeah, as soon as I saw it was Byzantines, it, uh, that was it. Uh, the order went in, but yeah, I did wonder whether that was really medieval or sort of more classical Dark Ages, or I don't know how you would describe it, but anyway, it's, you know, it's commanding colour, so yeah. it's, 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 it's on the list. Yeah, it's on the Indeed. list. Yeah, another Kickstarter that arrived just just after Christmas, uh, just after the New Year. Uh, again, another Hex Encounter game that I'd, I'd backed, uh, Thunder and Least from Victory Point Games. Um, so it's a it's part of a or the first of a, a series of games that Victory are planning to release. Um, do you know Frank Frank Chadwick? Have you heard his name? He's yep. pretty big in the board games, uh, the Hex Encounter games. So this is his. Um, well, again, back in the day, he did the Europa series of Hex Encounter games, which I had several sets of. I had the um, Fire in the East and the um, Fall of France and the, the Norway expansions for this Europa series of games, but were never quite completed. Um, so this is apparently this new version that, he's, that they've brought out. So Thunder and the East quite literally crashed through the floor um, when it arrived from the post office. <laughs> it's a massive, it's a massive game. Um, so yeah, oh, it's just too sexy for words. All these counters and massive map, etc. So yeah, that's 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 great from my point of view. Um, Shadows of Killforth. Uh, I backed, I backed the um, Gloom of Killforth expansions and also um, ordered Touch of Death as it was oh. back then. So um, so I've just had to order the expansions. Um, with the Kickstarter, so yes, uh, <laughs> yes, so that's the thing. Oh, and oh, and and especially when they suddenly went, oh, and oh, look, we've done these play mats. Play mats. Oh, I know. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I think I might wait to, for the pledge manager for those, but um, yeah, I can't see me not getting those, or at least certainly the the, the main play mat. I'm not entirely sure about the player mats, but. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, I, I mean, yeah, certainly, yeah. As you say, the, and especially when they turn around and say, "Oh yes, it will accommodate the tarot size cards that you yeah, get in yeah. the expansion pack," oh, and it was like, uh, and, right. and knowing, and hey, say, having seen what a good job they did on the um, on the map from ten sixty six, yeah, uh, it's like, oh yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> and um, yeah. There was a Kickstarter finished today, uh, Tenfold Dungeon. I don't know if you noticed Ooh, that. Yes. Yeah, oh, yes. So, uh, oh, you went after I, that, did you? I think I backed that one. 
Um, but uh, I'll take the fifth and not say any more about it. Um, and another thing that um, yeah is should be hopefully here this week uh, is the latest um, board pack for Warhammer Underworlds Night Vault, which Ooh. again we'll talk about later. We'll talk about later, indeed. Yes. Yeah, I think I better stop there. Okay, uh, you reminded me of something. Um, no, I, no, I'll, I'll talk about it later. Um, Mr. H- Mr. H- Mr. H- Mr. Hobbs. <laughs> Mr. Hello. Hobbs. What on earth have you been up to, Moon Man? Please tell us. I, I, I've i kind of blown my budget for about the next three months. <laughs> <laughs> is what I've done. So Good I grief, you've got Simon month. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Go so, on. when we last book, I think I said that um, I I have Black Plague, the core game, <laughs> and I'd ordered the uh, the the um, organizer set from uh, XE Laser, yes, which, which arrived and I put together, and it's just fantastic. Right. I think I may have also mentioned that I've been approached by somebody selling some of the Green <laughs> Horde stuff. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned in passing that somebody uh, that somebody uh, had um, had seen you coming, and and <laughs> happened to mention. Oh, by the way, Mike. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Yes. Come on. So. That was purchased. <laughs> you shock me. <laughs> so what was in that then, mate? That was um, the Green Horde core game, the Horde box, which is all of the uh, Kickstarter expand- uh, Kickstarter extras. Um, there was the Friends and Foes and the other expansion, which I can't remember the name of. War- is, that, is that the werewolf one? The what? Uh, Warframe? No, that's... no, 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 oh, it's no, different. no. Oh, sorry, this is different. We'll come back to that one. Oh, okay. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I, I tell you, what, I shall step over to my cupboard and open the door and tell you exactly what was in it. Uh, it was um, yeah, no, no rest for the wicked. Right. The, so it was that. Okay, so uh, so for those who the uninitiated, what on earth is Green Horde? Green Horde is zombie side with um, well, zombie orcs really. Oh, so it's not just orcs; it's zombie orcs. Yeah, it's zombie orcs, but um, unlike the the, the classic game, these um, when when uh, the zombies spawn, um, quite a lot of them will spawn off table as well in a little horde area, and um, they'll build up and they'll build up, <laughs> and then um, you turn over a car when you spawn, and you might say, "Unleash the horde." Unleash the horde, yeah, yeah. And He's they all, been there. yeah, yeah. Which is a lovely mechanic, but you also get some siege weapons in it. Um, yeah, how you... do they work? I mean, I, I, I've played Black Plague, and I've, I've my mate Alan has got um, Green Horde, but uh, we've never managed to get the siege engines to the table. So, I mean, how, how do they work? Um, I think they used um, you can fire off table into the horde. Oh, all oh, right, okay. So it's for killing the zombies rather than the other way around. Yeah. Ah, all right, okay. That's not so bad. That's not yeah. so bad. Um, I think you can also use it on. Um, on table as well. Um, there's also dra- two dragons, zombie dragons. Yeah, there's, yeah they're oh. cool things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, so so that, that was that. Um, so I I bought the the organizer for that from from uh, XE Laser, which uh, arrived last week, and I put together over the weekend. Have you just and, uh, have you just taken out shares in that company or what? <laughs> <laughs> they're very good. And then. Um, <laughs> Well, actually, whilst we were um, together in uh, in Firestorm, um, there was an eBay sale going on um, for Black Plague with all of the uh, Kickstarter expansions and a load of extra stuff um, that was pickup only. Right. So I put I put in a a low rush bid. A low. <laughs> <laughs> As you do, thinking, oh, oh, no, oh that, yeah, that'll never happen. Uh, yeah, I think you know, this this sort of stuff normally goes about three and a half hundred to four hundred quid, you know. Yeah. Um, and I won that. But you but you've already got but, but you've already got it. Yeah, I have one of the boxes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not worth better. So last weekend I had a, I had a pleasant drive to Bear uh, to Bedford, to Bedford. and that. <laughs> <laughs> so how much did that actually cost you in postage and packing again? 
Well, uh, yeah, nothing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, could, no. Sorry, could be a service. Nothing. Um, yeah. um, in, in, in diesel, about thirty quid. <laughs> But it was a nice day out. Okay. So, yeah, for, for that, I, I got uh, I, um, another copy of the Black Bay core game. A copy of Wolf's, Wolfsburg, which is the werewolf one, which is about 100 quid or so. Um, the Hunter pack and the... Um, a pack of that's the, that's the Kickstarter exclusives again. Um, the zombie bosses. Uh... NPCs one, the heroes box, four of the special guest boxes, the gloom and talia, special dice, little dice bag, the um, little plastic dice tower, the skeletal walkers. It's a bundle, Neil. It's a goodly bundle. <laughs> <laughs> so you got, so you got that and the green horde one as well. Good grief! Yeah. That is that is several hundred miniatures. That is a lot of miniatures. It's a lot of boxes. Yeah. I've also ordered the um, the BXC laser organizer for the night's pledge. What? What? You shock me! No, you certainly shock, not. Yes. <laughs> and I've also managed to sell my my spare copy of Black Plague, which wasn't actually opened. He'd he taken the um, the wrapper off it when I opened it. Cards are the cards are all still sealed. All the boards are still sealed. So, who, who on earth would purchase that off you? I have no idea. I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> uh, Is that a loaded question, Neil? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll come, Dave, we'll, we'll come on to that. We'll come on to that later. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. It wasn't me. <laughs> Curses. <laughs> he, he, was it? Was, yeah, we'll, yeah, come on to that. Later. Yeah. Yeah. All right, okay. So, I'm, forget, I'm forgetting the end section of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, no, no spoilers for Hags Dave. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so that was the, the big purchases. <laughs> like I say. What is the more? Yeah. <laughs> you think you blend your budget uh, 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 until the expo, you think? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, my budget is blown. Um <laughs> Now, I did get Laughter of Dragons from Cubicle 7. That's turned up. So that's, um, you might like this one, Dave, because it's a ring role-playing game, the Cubicle 7 game. Yeah, I've got quite a few of the, the one running um, hardbacks, but not 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 the recent ones. I haven't got the likes of Bree or, or Laughter of Dragons, etc. Uh, again, uh, back in the day, I, I didn't really play Middle-earth role-playing, um, although I did have quite a few of the, the, the supplements, etc. But, yeah. Just, Try and get just to read through them. They're lovely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're lovely books. Absolutely lovely books. Mm. So, yeah, I, I try and pick them up if I see them at a decent price, you know, hardback, because uh, yeah. they're you know, just lovely to have. But uh, whether I would ever get my, my regular gaming group to, to play uh, Lord of the Rings role playing, I'm not sure. But they're nice to have. So. They are. Yeah, so, that, so that's appears. Um. I backed Shadows of a Killful. Like uh, David, I, I pre-ordered the um, whatever it was called last week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah, it, yes, it was some. Touch, it was some death. It was originally yeah. called, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Look at that. Um, and I got sent from foregrounds. They sent um, all of the backers of the Fabled Realms because that's massively uh, late. Um, they sent. Um, four or sorry, three little goblin figures. Oh three yeah, goblin figures, which are gorgeous. Would you clean Apparently. them up? Oh yeah, yeah they seem to be they seem to be quite heavily, um, you know, lots of sprue attached to them and all the rest of it. But presumably they clean up okay. Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll clean up lovely. But for prints, they're they're excellent quality. Uh, it it does show you know when. When you use a, a very good industrial printer, you know what you're doing. Yeah. The quality that you can get. But uh, apparently, um, I was speaking to Cad and he's saying that you know, they're taking about sort of 16 hours to print. Oh, my word. You know, yeah. Oh, and really? It's a very small print area as well. So, you know, they, that's why it's taking so long because they've got 10 of these things pretty much going 24 hours printing this God. stuff. But, uh, so um yeah that's um that's me Neil 
Excellent, excellent. You reminded me of a couple of things I'd missed. Because <laughs> um, you mentioned RP- well. yeah, because you mentioned <laughs> RPGs. Uh, yeah. Right, okay. Well, first off, uh, sl- slightly RPG related. Um, I bought the extra two tile sets uh, for Conan from Modiphius because mm-hmm. I had two that came with the Kickstarter, and I thought, you know what, I'll get the other two. The artwork's great. I just wish they were on thicker card. They're on not 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 the thickest card in the world. I just wish the card was a bit was a little bit thicker than what it is, but they are lovely. Mm. Uh, so, so I thought, well, it would be rude not to have the all four in, you know, in in physical form as opposed to just the PDFs. And then uh, I forget somebody, I forget who it was, but somebody tweeted, "Oh no, it was Mister Bond, Stephen Bond." Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Not Jeff for a change. But he says, "Oh, oh." Um, I've just spotted this, having spotted this other thing last week. The other thing he, he the uh, I'd missed. I, I had an email about it, but I just missed. Um, Humble Bundle did one of their offers, uh, so I bought the entire set of Pathfinder books on Humble Bundle. <laughs> uh, for I mean, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, it is. Uh, I mean, there are. I mean, it's eighteen dollars, and it's the entire Pathfinder, and Pathfinder, and Starfinder collection. Um, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. What, what Humble Bundle do is like you, you pay so much, and you get uh, you get everything. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, so it was, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, and it was like I've always wondered what Pathfinder was like. <laughs> now I can find out because people have been raving about Pathfinder for a while, and yeah, I've now got it all. Uh, yeah, so that, so that, uh, yeah, so yeah, I did that. Right, okay. Um, moving swiftly on. Um, good grief! Look at the time on this section alone. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> have you spotted anything shiny releasing next week? So probably um, just after, uh, uh, just before. You've downloaded this, or so the last couple of days before before you downloaded this, thirteenth of March, Thud and Blunder comes out. Now, Thud and Blunder is the latest set of skirmish wargaming rules from uh, those wonderful uh, Ministry of Gentlemanly Warfare. Those who have bought you in Her Majesty's name, Dice Show, and uh, Blood Eagle. Uh, Thud and Blunder is their high fantasy rules. And they are due out next week. Uh, there's, there's a review of them on the Meeples and Miniatures website. And they look brilliant. Uh, I love, uh, I mean, I think Daicho and Gothic especially, I, I really like. Uh, and yeah, this is more, this is just more of the same. It's, it's same combat mechanics, just different bits and pieces, extra different bits and pieces. They've done a really nice magic system with it. Uh, the warband building system is really nice. And if nothing else, buy it for the, for the scenario generator because they've got this massive scenario, uh, scenario generator. With so basically you've got scenarios and then you have like you know you have uh, things that are happening from a from a a uh, an environment point of view. Then you've got little mini side objectives happening as well. And by the time you start putting all these together into different scenarios, you've got thousands of possibilities. It's uh, no, it's really it's a brilliant product, really good. I'm looking forward to that. So. And strangely enough, that will mean that you know, or like those rangers I just bought. <laughs> Matt went, "Hang on a second, what do you buy fifteen? What do you buy fifteen rangers? I didn't realise that Rangers of the Shadow Deep was a mass battle game." <laughs> well, funnily, well, funnily enough, um, I've now got, I've got, I've got, I'll have a rangers warband. Anyone else spotted anything? Well, yeah, I... yeah, just, just obviously on that blood and thunder. I mean, I, I'd had it been spoken about and. I was trying not to look at it, and then of course I read your review, Neil, and curse you a thousand times because, yeah, yeah, I think I can see myself picking that up. It does look quite a good, 
quite a good set of rules. It has to. Um, it has to be said at the point where you were uh, earlier when you were talking about what you were really into. I'm thinking. Yeah. Y- yeah. yeah th- these are th- these are a must. You got all. You got all the figures on the shelf. All the same things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Got to follow my sword. There you go. Mm-hmm. I got a couple of things. Um, Great Escape Games. Good old Stu. Hello, Stu, if you're listening. Hi, Stu. Um, they're releasing a new set of rules called Seven Days to the Rhine. Or Seven Days to the Rhine. Yes! Which looks like a... Uh, I think it's based on Iron, Iron Cross, which is a nice set of rules. But it's uh, Cold War. It's Cold War, yeah. I think the blurb said, you know, it's great for people who like um, lots of tanks and helicopters and stuff. So, uh, yeah, that sounds sounds cool. They've also just released some um, Stalingrad veterans, 28 mil Stalingrad Germans. And um, some of those sculpts are gorgeous. Really, really nice sort of uh, heavy winter wear, you know, yeah. dirty, mucky. So, uh, yeah, they've got two good uh, products there. Um, another one uh, for you, Neil. Noble Knight Games. Yes. Uh, first release Sons of Mars. Rules for the gladiatorial combat in the arena. I don't know much about them. Hang on, is it, it, what you say just release? Isn't that wasn't that the one that was originally out last year? From Nick? Uh yeah, twenty eighteen. Yeah. But yes, I think I think it's just come on the half back. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. 17 detailed gladiator classes, 10 different beasts, 30 skills, 40 pieces of weaponry. Oh, you'll love that. <laughs> campaign campaign play. Mm. You're looking for a campaign system. Yes. Balanced play for large game groups or solo play. It's a learning, <laughs> Thank you, Michael. That's okay. That's uh, Sons of Mars, the rule book from Noble Light Games. Another odd one that uh, my mate Marks sent me. It's a company called Wu Fun Games. <laughs> who, um, they got a Kickstarter. Yes. They're essentially doing flats. So okay. these are figures either, I think they're 18 mil or 28 mil. Um, Wu Fun. Wu Fun. But these are uh, sort of plastic, clear plastic glass figures which are printed front and back, full colour printed front and back. Okay. So, and, and what 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 would you see the use of these for? They uh, they're doing them for big mass battles. Essentially, you buy how, all of. How do you how do you spell Wufun? <laughs> w U Fun. Oh, W U. That's that's why I can't find it. I love to. I mean, they're they're not for me, but as an idea for getting the game on the table, they're they're doing Napoleonics. They've got um, 17th century stuff there. I think I've seen American Civil War. Um, there's they got Persians there, Romans, uh, American the American War Revolution, Wild West. Civil, American Civil War, those are Napoleonics. Of course, they're, they're full colour printed on on very thin, sort of clear plastic. And yeah, they did. Like I say, you know, you, you can pick up 340 odd miniatures in a box, and all you've got to do is um, stick them on the bases that they provide, and you've got armies. Okay, oh, my word. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's Interesting, <laughs> isn't it? Um, I've... wow. I mean, when you when you see them from the front, you're kind of thinking, actually, they look a darn so better than what you might expect. Yeah. Oh yeah, I found them there. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I suppose that's a step up from those um those paper figures that uh, Peter Dennis yes uh, yeah. produces yeah. with his you know bringing history books uh, or refight history books. Yeah, it's that sort of stuff. And also, you look at what Conquest are doing. Is it Conquest? With their um, six mil um, MDF figures. 
Oh, um, c- commission figurines. Commission figurines. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Commission, yeah. Yeah, but um, it, it's interesting, and I can see the the appeal of it. I mean, you, know, I, I, you look at the, the that photo they got halfway down the website of. Is that is that meant to be? Is that meant to be? Um, is that meant to be Ugamore? Possibly. I mean, I mean, this it's is a great it, podcast. It, <laughs> yeah. no, it's great. Isn't it's it? great go, Wait, what, what? What? You don't you, you don't recognise that building? I'm sure. Uh, anyway, it's, yeah, that's it, it, yeah. It, yeah, it is, and it's. Uh, but it's. But actually, looking at just just looking at it in the picture, unless you knew they were flats. It, they don't look like flats in the picture. Mm. Obviously, they're as a kind of war, like war games range, but they are. They look. Mm, oh, God, that's diff. That's really different. Yeah, very, very different. So, um, I mean, it's on Kickstarter. There, I mean, they've they've raised twenty five grand so far. They were only looking for eighteen. Um, unfortunately, it's only forty hours to go, but they have got a site, and I think you can buy this stuff straight from the site as well. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, not the cheapest thing in the world, but uh... no. But if they're already pre-cut and printed, uh, uh, so I was going to say it's a case of <laughs> pre-cut printed. Yeah, yeah, you just yeah. You, yeah buy and put it on the table, and you're off. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. There you go. Mm. That's me. Excellent stuff. Good grief! Yeah. I think that's our longest ever confession. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get out of here because it's time to talk about the hobby. We'll be back shortly. Hi, everyone. Neil here. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Meeples and Miniatures podcast. If you are, I'm wondering, would you consider becoming a patron of the show? For as little as a dollar a month, you can help support us in in what we're doing uh, with the show for that uh, you can get access to uh, a monthly question and answer show and that will also allow you to answer, uh, ask questions if you pledge more you potentially get bonus podcasts and you never know you might even get invited to be on the show yourself if you want to know more details please follow the link to our patreon page uh, which is on the front of the website. That's www.meeplesandminiatures.co.uk. Thanks a lot. So we're back in and it's time to chat about what we've been up to hobby-wise. Wow. Um Actually, not been play. Uh, missed out a little bit on gaming in the last couple of weeks. Uh, haven't played, haven't played all the time. Although that has been that has been uh, made up for by uh, a bonus day gaming that we did down at uh, down at Firestorm Games in Cardiff. Hot down there for the day with uh, myself and Mister Hickman. Uh, main reason for going was actually to get a game of Nemesis in, so that Ralph could show me the error of my ways. <laughs> And this is one bit I forgot because, as well as as well as showing us showing me the error of my ways because I did because I didn't do multi wave shipping, uh, it, uh, just to serve me right, he also happened to uh, happened to mention that the pledge manager was still open. <laughs> <laughs> so having played it, I may have ordered some extra bits from t- in addition to my usual pledge. Uh, so yes, uh, got to play Nemesis uh, with the likes of I mean Ralph are very kind of just unplayed with the likes of uh, Mr Hickman, uh, Mr Randall, nice to meet Mr Randall, um, Fraser and and uh, uh, Ewan and the aforementioned Mr Hobbs. Yeah, let's not discuss this um, this game. You, know, <laughs> you, you upset. <laughs> And, and by the way, it's Yoan. Hi, Yoan. Yoan. Oh, sorry, yes, Yoan. Sorry. Uh, I'm thinking I'll miss... Have I missed anybody? No, that was it, wasn't it? Oh, no, no. That no. was it. That was it, no. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, Mr. Hobbs was... Mr. Hobbs complained because I threw an alien queen at him. <laughs> um, because, you know, basically, you know, look, 
okay, I died. I was the first. I was the first player to die, and, and... I opened a door for you to get out and escape. <laughs> I did. I, I, I didn't have to. I proved my loyalty to the to the crew. I fixed an engine. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, well, you did, actually, you did fix an engine because that was yes, that engine was in fact yeah. working. But you, yeah, yeah. So basically, you fixed an engine, and then as soon as things got a little bit heavy, you went sod this for a lark and just jumped into an escape pod. No, I set the self self destruct sequence first, and then jumped into it. <laughs> 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 yes, which then somebody, uh, which uh, Yoan actually uh, sabotaged the self destruct time uh, sequence and stopped it. Yeah, uh, and uh, and so you couldn't. Uh, so the ship was no longer the ship was no longer going to blow up, uh, except for the fact that me because I died, uh, I actually got to, uh, as an option where the player who dies then gets to play the aliens. As uh, as I chatted with Ralph, I said, you know, does that mean that you know? Essentially, because I'm playing the aliens, I get, uh, you know, uh, my my role is to be a complete and utter. Uh, and you were. <laughs> well, he, well, he said, well, yes. So I did, and it, uh, so I, you know, I just thought I'd, I'd do what the aliens would do. And it has to be said, I think, I think when somebody's playing the aliens, the game gets much harder. Uh, but yes, I, I mean, I, I, I encouraged Mike to run away to to get off the <laughs> ship. Uh, you could have been in an engine room with the Agent Queen. That wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't turn around and say you were just trying to help me off the ship. <laughs> I just encouraged. I just encouraged you. You, you, you survived. I mean, okay. Yes. You, you got a friendly nip in. You got a friendly nip in the process, but you know, <laughs> took off my leg. <laughs> <laughs> and then I. And then the aliens blew up the ship because yeah. they basically. Well, yeah, they basically caused. Uh, one of the ways that you can win the game, or the aliens can win the game, or the crew can lose the game, is that if you get more than a, a certain number of malfunctions, because each room can malfunction, and uh, and basically you say, okay, add these number of malfunction counters. Oh, uh, oops. Yes, I, I think the ship has just blown up. But tremendous game. Nemesis, tremendous game. Really fun. Uh, and on top of that, actually, we uh, then in the afternoon we were going to play Deep Madness, and then suddenly went, "Oh my word, is that the time?" Because <laughs> Nemesis went on for a while. It has to be said. Uh, yeah. So you and Sh- uh, Sean disappeared off to um, to play uh, Epic. Did. Uh, and which and we uh, we were going to play Deep Madness, and then we had to run out of time. So actually, Fraser, bless his cotton socks. Uh, had brought Raiders of the North Sea, which I, I, I must admit I'd never even heard of. What a great little game. It's a kind of a card worker placement game. Uh, but yeah, great little game, Raiders, Raiders of the North Sea. Really, really impressed by that. So uh, other than that, we got Mansions of Madness out on the table with um, uh, with Josh. Really interesting because we played the first scenario, but we played it with... And because we played it and I'd got the the latest expansion pack, uh, which is the oh, I'll call it the horrific journeys expansion. You kind of get used uh, at least a little bit to the way the build. Uh, okay, they change things slightly, but the buildings have a certain layout, especially when you first kind of get into the yeah. You know, in, in the first scenario, you kind of get into the building, you kind of, yes, I, okay, we know that through that door there's this and that's over there. All of a sudden, every, everything was completely different. I was like, oh, well, hang on, oh, hang on a minute. Okay, I now do not under, I now do not know where everything, I mean, I've played that first scenario like three or four times. And like, I no longer know where anything, I no longer know where we are at all. Because <laughs> everything, because we're using different, different tiles and everything has moved. So I was really impressed. Uh, so it, that just goes to show just the, re- the replayability that they've got with Mansions of Madness. So um, I'm hoping that, especially when we say we were just talking about uh, the journeys in Middle Earth, uh, it looks like several of the engine. Uh, well, it's it's effectively looks like it's using the same game engine. Mansions of Madness in in Middle Earth. Uh, yeah, why not? Oh, yes. Just so, on that on that point, Neil. I mean, does the app? Do you need a, an internet connection to, to run the app? No, you or... don't. Oh, that's great, because no, as I said, my internet connection in the cabin is not the best, so um, 
that was one thing that was slightly concerning me about journeys that oh my goodness i've bought this game i might not be able to run it if my ipad you know doesn't connect to the internet which uh, it will never do in the cabin so okay that's probably no, it's fine i was playing it um i downloaded it on my on my kindle and uh, did, didn't have a connection and no it, it ran it ran perfectly fine it was cool. uh, no, no problems at all uh so yeah we're impressed by that so that's kind of what we've been playing. Also played the Escape the Dark Castle with some of the new expansions. That's a lot of fun. Uh, enjoying that. I've been painting. <laughs> I've been painting. You have. <laughs> uh, it's scary. Uh, yes. So um, I think I'd mentioned that I. Yeah, we mentioned on the last show that I was paint, busy painting spiders and rats because uh, I, I, I kind of got them out on the table after to, to do something different other than painting normals uh, and they were they were nice they were, they were nice to paint um, and but as I say it's just basically putting everything together for um, everything together for range of the shadow deep and so I've just painted a load of zomb- uh, mantic zombies which uh, Funnily enough, um, I follow the painting guide that you need to follow, Mister Mister Hobbs. <laughs> uh, I'm not painting mine. Really? They look, but they look gorgeous painted. They they look really nice. Seriously, I think you, I, I, I th- you know it's yes, Sarastro's painting guides, black plate. Yes, I know. I've seen them. Yes, they're, they're <laughs> yeah, lovely. They're really but good. yeah, but basically, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I actually from the uh, one of the last Patreon shows I did was uh, I, I, I essentially re- reviewed. Uh, reviewed the Mantic Zombie Spread. Yeah, they're okay. Um, they have their quirks, and they're fine. They're zombies. Yeah, uh, they're zombies. And but what I did was uh, interestingly, uh, when Sir Astrid does his painting guide, um, he gives various ideas for different skin colours uh, and just different different effects to use. So I kind of went, oh, I'll, I'll just have a bit of a play. And it worked worked really really well, and uh, especially with, but even just base coat and then slapped on strong tone, mm. not the dip, the wash. Uh, although I am told that the wash does almost the same job as the dip, uh, but doesn't take as long to dry. And obviously, okay, it's, it's not part of the polyurethane; it's just you know an acrylic yeah. wash. It's color, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but. Having said that, the the effect that you get with it is really impressive. Uh, yeah. On excellent, quick uh, tabletop standard zombies. Uh, so yeah, so I've I've been doing those, and I've currently got the aforementioned raiders, uh, raiders, rangers. Uh, they're they're all sat undercoated. Um, got a couple of a uh, couple of Irish wolfhounds on the table. Uh, the actually, it's the under, uh, it's the other world miniatures hunting dogs set. Uh, so I think I I put a uh, I put a link at the start of the week on the pod on the uh, the po- uh, on, on the website to uh, a page of I think it's I think it's showdogs dot com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wargaming. So, what do you do? You, you yes, you, yes, you you link to a site about um, about dog shows, uh, but no, they they actually had a really nice um, uh, a really nice kind of uh, color palette um, of all the diff- of all the different colors that Irish Wolfhounds are. Because uh, I went, oh, what different colors can you get? You know, because most people think, oh, you know, brown, grey. Uh, but there's loads of di- loads of different colours. I mean, you know, I must admit, I'm not I'm I'm not overly confident that I can paint Brindle, because um, that just looks complicated. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was it was just a, it was just a, I found that just an interesting resource. Uh, so you know, if you're wondering uh, on your dogs what what colour to paint them, uh, showdogs.com uh, actually uh, one of their things is they have like all the official uh, the official breed colours if you like. Uh, what you are, you know, what people are judged on, etc. So there's that, and oh, oh, and I also got a couple of a uh, couple of the familiars from other world miniatures. So I've got uh, a it's a hawk of some description and an owl. Uh, yeah, what am I doing? To, well, okay, so this is owl. Looking at it, it looks like it's an eagle owl. It's sat on a tree with its wings spread. 
Now, I was having kit- enough kittens thinking about having to paint the barn owl from um, from uh, the Burrows and Badgers range because they have this lovely barn owl. And that, but I mean, that's huge. You know, it's a it's a really big miniature, uh, but it's lovely. And then I thought, I know what's this owl? I'll have it, uh, you know, uh, as a companion. Because oh, oh, you can have a bird of prey. An owl's a decent bird of prey. Oh, it looks like an eagle owl. And then I looked at a picture of an eagle owl. What on they're earth? Big. What? Well, <laughs> uh, well, other than the fact that they're big, I mean, if you see the color scheme of it, uh, what on earth am I thinking? I'm trying to paint one of uh, a twenty-eight mil. Eagle owl. Yeah, I think you're thinking it a little bit, mate. Yeah, I, I, it's yeah, fantasy, see Neil. You can paint it any colour you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean, um, yeah, <clears throat> yes. So, <laughs> loads of stuff. Actually, yeah, loads of stuff achieved already. Uh, I am yes. My painting mojo is um, is 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 is, is, an, is in a good place at this point in time. So that's me. That's what I've been doing in the hobby at this point in time. Uh, oh, and lots of podcasting. Lots of uh, uh, catching up on my uh, on the Patreon shows. Uh, so we've got we've had a couple of uh, secret diaries. Uh, we've we've actually had a Q and A posted. Thank you to everybody who contributed to that. So, interesting discussion on that. Actually, we'll come, maybe come back to that, uh, uh, but later there was an interesting discussion on. Uh, somebody asked a question, uh, funnily enough, about. Um, uh, about how uh, different types, potentially different types of game, may affect, you know, who's playing them and all this sort of thing. And oh, oh, oh I'm talking about big battle games. Mm. And uh, you know, why don't we see that many big battle games anymore? And uh, are, you know, are they likely to uh, are they likely to die out? Uh, but yeah, some interesting stuff. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, yes, desperately chomping at the bit to get more paint on miniatures, which is quite scary. Yeah. David, what have you been up to? Oh, a few things. Um, as, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, there's not a, not a gaming club in Aaron Broth, but I do have a regular group of guys come down to the cabin, you know, usually try and get them once a week. Actually, tonight would have been our normal gaming night, but uh, I had to put them off because oh, I was doing sorry. this. That's quite all right. That's quite all right. Um, I did get a bit of a slagging for that, but hey-ho. Um, so, yeah, so we, we usually try and game once a week and um, primarily... You know, board games, um, but at the same time we've managed to get some Shadespire played, uh, we've done that a few times play a bit of Magic um, sometimes just pre-constructed decks, sometimes a bit of Sealed breaking out the boosters and building decks from that so we've done that um, Lords of Waterdeep, we got out, out oh. I think it was last month, we got that with the, the Scoundrels of Skullport expansion um, so that was a good game, yeah That's I, a was spect- game, I was spectacularly last I mean I was last by so many points it was embarrassing um, but hey, it was good fun. Was don't good tell, fun. don't tell me. Did you have abundance of those pesky blue skulls? I had a few of those, in fairness. Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Um, I mean, I just played it wrong, but hey, it was good fun. It was, um, it was funny as I saw my my uh, victory point track going <laughs> going steadily downwards when they were counting up the total at the end. <laughs> yeah, so that was so that's for Lords of Waterdeep. Um, played a bit of bolt action, as I mentioned. Uh, as I said, me and my son Rory uh, had a game a couple of nights ago. So we had a uh, Br- late war British against late war German. That was a good laugh. That was Rory's first game of bolt action, so he seemed quite quite uh, keen to to do some more. He's trying to build up a Finnish um, army. He he seems to have got himself quite uh, entranced with the with the Finns. So uh, he's starting to put some some paint on some models for that. La- last game I played with the guys, uh, we call ourselves the. Honourable Arbroath Gamers Guild, or THAG for short. So um, the last game that the THAGers played uh, was Gaslands. Um, we set that up uh, in the cabin and had the zombie bash scenario. So we were driving our, our vehicles about trying to um, collect zombies and, funnily enough, I, um, you know, blow each other up, uh, which was happening on a fairly regular basis. So um, so shameless plug uh, for my blog. Um, I blogged for um, a few years back and then got out of the habit of it. And then when I learned I was coming on to this, I thought, ah, I better do something hobby-wise, etc. So I resurrected the blog, and uh, uh, it's called Kingsley Park's Wargaming Menagerie. So um, shameless plug for that. And um, so I put up a post about the Gaslands game. Where, we does played. That, where does that name come from? 
I, well, I, I have to say um, I, I've regretted the choice of Menagerie because I think that's probably why I get so many hits from porn sites. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever excuse you want to use, mate. Ah, uh, indeed, yeah, indeed, yeah. yeah. So, uh, menagerie, but you know, it's it's a it's a mixture of things, etc. And you know, uh, as I've said, I you know I have done a lot of you know mixture of things, war gaming wise, gaming wise. So, from but uh, yeah, maybe not the best. So yeah, it's also about a couple of the boat action games that that we've had over the last um, last few weeks, etc. Um, Rory and I also had a game of Squad Leader. He uh, oh, wow. had been eyeing up, he had been eyeing up the, the, the copies on the shelf, and as I say, he's been, you know, he's been showing a bit of interest in Hex Encounter games. So we cracked that open and played the very first scenario, the Guards Counterattack, which is the, you know, the classic Russian hordes trying to capture the some a um, couple of buildings from the from the German defenders. So so yeah, he really enjoyed that. So again, we'll try and get that back to the table before too long. Um, and at the weekend there, we also had a game of What a Tanker um, set up for him. And uh, so I had a couple of Shermans and he had a couple of Pans of Fours and we uh, ran through that. And uh, yeah, the first game lasted about 30 minutes maybe. And uh, the Shermans took out the Panzers pretty quickly. So we set up again and, and uh, replayed it. And this time the, the Panzers came out on top. But uh, yeah, great. that's a good laugh, What a Tanker. We've played that a few times with the, the Thaggers and um, I, I think actually a, a blog post will be coming about, up about that tomorrow if I think I've scheduled it right. So, so yeah, you'll read all about how the how um, Jeremy Carruthers and Peter um, Peter Plunkett, I think I called him, I can't remember. But anyway, the British tank commanders were, were extremely successful in the first game and taking out the Germans. So, good fun for that. So yeah, that, that, that's over the last few weeks, gaming wise, um, painting wise. Um, I painted Pegasus Bridge. I got the um, Pegasus Bridge battle set for for Christmas. Ooh, a year passed. Was that the, and... the the bolt action one? Yeah, the bolt action one. Yeah, so um, it, it was sitting in the box for most of last year, and then I took a, a, a panic, you know, guilt panic that uh, I'd got this and how long's that bridge again? Oh, the actual model of it, it's about two and a half feet. It's massive. Absolutely. Don't say it, Neil. Neil, let it go. Let it go, Neil. <laughs> sorry, I just, I just, thought, I just, thought, I just thought, asked the question. Sorry, so yeah, sorry. Carry on, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, so I, as I say, I, I got Christmas 2017, so Christmas 2018 was approaching. I thought, bugger, I better get this, do something <laughs> with it. So so I got it built before Christmas, and then um, after the new year, etc., started painting, and I got so, it finished. And uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a cracking model, I must admit, but absolutely so it's, enormous. It, it's, 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 a, it's, it's only been in the box a year. I don't know what you worried about. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm letting the I'm letting the side down. I know. So, but obviously, once I got that built, uh, I got the guys to to play the the introductory scenario from the from the booklet that came with the set. So they had had a go at that, and uh, yeah, good fun. What else have we been painting? Um, painted a brand carrier for my my late war British uh, half track for the late war British. Some paratrooper a heavy a medium machine gun team for my British paratroopers. Also painted, or well, as I said, I think I mentioned, uh, I got some 28 mil French, for early war French, uh, for Christmas last year. So that came again. It was the Warlord, I think 500 point bolt action force. So uh, I also got a couple of extra bits and pieces there. So I've painted up the the Shar B1 tank. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been done, and I've started on the infantry. So the command figures are, are all painted, and I've just started painting the um, first of the infantry sections that I got. So. So they're on the painting table just now. Um, painted up the thorns of the Briar Queen warband for Night Vault. So that's the first of the new warbands that, that I've managed to get finished. So, so they are done. And the okay. um, that that last thing that, that last thing meant nothing to me whatsoever. But hopefully we'll find more about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, hopefully as well. Hopefully as well. Um, so on the painting table are the um, storm. It's the other warband from the the Night Vault set who are called. I'm just trying to remind myself, Stormfires, Curse Breakers, they're called. So they're effectively like the, the Stormcast Eternals, but they're wizardy types. So they are still on the painting table. I've got, as I say, the aforementioned French. Uh, I've got another Bren carry, but this time I'm trying to paint it up in 8th Army colours because I've got an 8th Army force in 28mm. I've got a, power troop, a three British Paratrooper mortar team to, to get finished off. And then my nemesis, Neil, 
are my Byzantine cavalry that have been sitting on this table for probably longer than your Normans, in fairness. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which ones yeah. are those, though, David? They were the Greek, uh, from Griffin Beast. Griffin Beast, yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. lovely, yeah. They're, they're nice figures, and I may have, I may have painted a fair, uh, well, say a fair number, I think I've painted about a dozen of them. Yeah. Um, but I just, you know, just every time I look at the next lot and then they're sitting there and I mean, they've got more than just undercoat on them, certainly, but I just can't get past it. So I might have to take a leaf out of your book, Neil, and just, just try and go for it and get them done. And then maybe that'll encourage me to get the rest of the figures finished because I think I've still got another dozen or 20 or so in the box mm-hmm. still to be painted. Got all the infantry painted for them. So I mean, I've got myself a, a, a saga force for, mm-hmm. for the Byzantines, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, the cavalry are definitely um, a black spot on the on the painting desk. So, so yeah, yeah. That, that that probably is is me for the time being. Wow, lots and lots of stuff. Wow. So, would you say you're pretty productive as far as painting and modelling is concerned? Is no, you know, is no, average? no, no. It's 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 pretty average. I mean, um, when when I got the cabin about four years ago now, the deal was that all of my stuff would have to come out of the house and go into the cabin, which was fine, not a problem, but I also feel that I have to spend as much time in the cabin to get the most out of it. But usually when I come out here and I come out with the intention of, of painting, etc., uh, I'll, I'll maybe get the, the paintbrush out and the pot paint open and then go and do something else. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And it's, 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 it's too easy to be distracted I mean, you know, with that, but yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll get a, you know, a a, a, a run going and get a pile of stuff churned out, etc., and then probably have sick myself. So uh, I'll stop. Let's not go near the painting table for a while. Couple days. I'm, I'm fortunate. I've got a permanently set up painting table, and all the paints are sitting there, so I don't have to tidy anything away. Which, again, probably makes me lazy because I just think, oh well, I can come back to it another day. And whereas I think if you, know, if you are in the habit of having to pack up, you know, set it out, do your stuff, paint, you know, pack it away again, you probably might actually be more productive because you you force yourself into a discipline and a routine. Mm, I, I, I probably disagree with you on that to a certain extent. Yeah, because, yeah. Because if you, at the same time, it's a case of if you've always got to unpack all your stuff. You wouldn't unpack it. You wouldn't, yeah, you just go, oh, it's just too much hassle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, evidence. Yes, yeah, evidence of that later. Uh, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, Mr. Hobbs, what have you been up to? But uh, not much. I've done no painting at all. That is most on Hobbs like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 I've assembled some figures to undercoat, and but yeah, I've I've done no painting at all. It, it's very odd. Is that? I mean, I, I know you. I know you. You know, you're you're really busy in 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 real life with work and stuff. Is, is that just a is that just a, a layover of that, or is it just a case of as um as recently trailed on on the odd cast, you've lost your painting mojo? Probably a little bit. It's the thought of painting all those zombies, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. I mean, work has been massively busy, so I haven't done much. I mean, I mean, I, I have been gluing together lots of MDF and felt pieces together, which I have quite enjoyed. But no, I just, I, it, this happens now and again. I'll, I'll go through lulls and I won't paint for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then I'll get the, you know, the job. I, I have um, assembled some swordfishes for Bag the Hun, so yes. they're going to be undercoated soon. And, but no, I just, you know, oh, yeah. when I don't want to paint, I, I just don't paint. Okay, I, I, cool. I, I can't force myself to sit down and paint. I have to, I have to be you know, infused to paint something. Um, so, listen to yeah. more podcasts. Oh yeah, I listen to all the podcasts. Money. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you want them doing something else. Uh, so yeah, so no painting. Um, we we have played Black Plague a few times at the War Games Capital of Wales. Um, so, so I take it you like. I, I, I take it you like it then. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the, we played like the, the opening game first, the four-player one, which was fun, and then we had a, a popper game um, 
<clears throat> which again was really interesting because there's this one creature in it called the Abomination. Um, and the <laughs> yeah. other thing, yeah, the only thing that will kill an Abomination is you've got to have um, basically two items. You've got to have a torch and you've got to have a thing called uh, Dragon Bile, which you've got to find. So without those, you can't kill its Abomination. You'll just go rampaging around. So the first game, he, you know, he appeared. Luckily, he, he appeared in um, in a building. So we were able to sort of keep him contained by making noise as, as far away from the door as possible. So, so he, he just wouldn't move. And we finished that. And we thought, yeah, it's quite good. You know, he's a good fun game. I'll be a little bit uh, easy. And then we had a game yesterday. And we all died. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was horrible. We <laughs> we just it must have been about a dozen times we fought our way back from oblivion, you know. And again, you know, literally on the very first turn, we opened the door and there was an abomination there. It's like, oh no, <laughs> you know. So and yeah, it just it, it it was great fun because we were just coming up against these challenges all the time. As soon as we finished one challenge, you know, they'd all be, all, all the zombies would be piled up and come with the next wave of them. So, yeah, really good fun. And I, I, I'm very glad I've actually bought all the stuff. As I can see, it's got, you know, now we've lost the game. I know it's not going to be a cakewalk. Yeah. But it's a game you've really got to think about. I don't think I've ever won a game of, of Zombie Side. I've played it a few times, the Black Plague version, and me and my pal Alan have tried it. And. Just we just get swamped with zombies and you 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 just die in a pile of bodies because we just get overrun. Yeah, we've sort of found that sticking together is a good idea. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, splitting up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never. Yeah, it's never I, I, hang on, yeah. hang on, hang on. Sorry, can I just can I just query this, Mister Hobbs? Does that mean that you have to kind of play cooperatively? Yes, you do. Yeah. Can you, like is this is this is this is this some strange concept that you've actually managed to <laughs> um managed to yeah because obviously that other yeah that other cooperative game that we played the other week. Yeah. Yeah. Moving <laughs> on from that. So yeah, so, so we played that. Um, Sean came down. Sean Randall. Hello, Sean. He came down to Cardiff for Friday night and Saturday. Now um, I'd arranged to meet up with Sean on Friday night. And we were going to have a quick game of Firestorm and then go for curry. He got stuck in traffic, pretty much all the way from London, so he arrived late. So, um, luckily, Steve uh, Bond came down on on the Friday, so me and him were sat there naturally for a couple of hours whilst he was trying to talk me into buying the Flash Gordon RPG books. <laughs> okay. But, but he failed, and I didn't buy them. So, ha, Steve. Um, is that, so, yeah, is so, that yet? No, no, my, my budget's blown, Neil. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, Sean finally made it, so we, we went out of carry in a nice natter, and then the Saturday you guys came down, and as I said, we played Nemesis, we played Epic, we had a nice little game of Epic, it was great fun. Good to get that back on the table. Um, that's about it, sort of gaming wise, no painting. Um, I have had uh, a painting order arrive from Gao for ADC painting. Um, I sent him some Phaeacian cavalry, no, sorry, Phaeacian infantry, um, from uh, West Wind. Ah, he's done a, just an amazing job on those. Just absolutely fantastic. All the cloaks have been details. He's got patterns everywhere. Ah, just beautiful figures. I haven't sent off the next painting order, but it's more Phaeacian, I'm afraid, Gareth. Uh, <laughs> So, what rules are you going to play with, um, Mike, for your creations? Um, you got I, a rule set in mind? Yeah, it's, it's, um, sword and spear are um, to the strongest. So I've done them on, they're, they're 15 old figures, so I've done them all on 80 wide bases. So they're fresh for both of those. Um, so, so I've yeah, got yeah. Uh, well, I, I've sort of done armies from the run to the so I've got creations. I've got Greeks, Spartans, Persians, and Scythians. So it covers that sort of, you know, Caucasus, Turkey, Greek area. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's lots of games you can play those. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's that. Um, and Vlad, good old Vlad, has um, he just sent over pictures of my Judge Dredd uh, vehicles. He's been painting them for me. Oh, so yes, they look, uh, look rather nice. Oh, they are. They look absolutely gorgeous. So there's a uh, there's three pat wagons, two of the Mark IVs, the flying ones, and one of the Mark III's, the old classic pat wagon. So those are from the Mongoose Kickstarter that I did way back in the day. And uh, yeah, so I can't wait to get those. And um, that's me. All done. Excellent stuff. Excellent. Right. Okay. So. All right, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, ooh, uncharted, well, relatively uncharted seas for us, we're going to talk about a Games Workshop boxed game. Ooh. We interrupt this programme to bring you another news flash as we cross once more to our South Wales reporter, Mike. What is happening at Firestorm Games? Hello, Neil. I'm, I'm speaking quietly because I'm currently in parts foreign. I have left my beloved Wales and journeyed east to the charming town of Swindon. Swindon? Why are you in Swindon, Mike? Well, there are two reasons, Neil. Firstly, well, the anti-luff is still running amok in Cardiff. He was last seen heading towards the Doctor Who ex exhibition. But um, I, I really wanted to try and get out and find some shelter. So I came to Swindon. Also, um, we could celebrate the opening of a brand new Firestorm Games here. A brand new F Firestorm Games, you say, in Swindon? Tell me more. Well, it's like the other two uh, shops in Cardiff and Newport. The Swindon shop is open seven days a week and has late night gaming nights on Thursday and Friday. There are also 16 six by four tables on site for gamers to use. Really? And well, what about the shop? Well, as you would expect, it stocks all the major brands. And not only that, it can also order stock from other stores if required. So if there's something that you fancy that's on, dis on display in the other stores, you can get a sent to Swindon and pick it up there. That sounds absolutely perfect, Mike. And what with the extra 5% discount that our listeners get using the offer code, I'm sure it's going to be a huge success. Uh, tell me, do they still have wobbly shelves? I believe the shelves have been strengthened ever since the uh, altercation of the anti luff in Cardiff, and the usual security procedures have been stepped up. Uh, there is razor wire around uh, the store, um, but I believe that's mainly for the anti luff. Excellent. Excellent. Wait, wait. We interrupt this news flash for another news flash. News is reaching us of chaos in Cardiff. Oh, no. A, a large object has been seen escaping the waterfront and and has been seen heading east at vast speed. Uh-oh. It appears to be heading towards the Seven Bridge. Uh-oh. Mike. Mike. Yeah? Mike. Neil, I can see a cloud of dust in the distance moving this way. Get out of there, Mike. Mike. Get out of there before it's too late! Bill, I, I... I'm very sorry, listener, but we appear to have lost contact once again with our South Wales reporter. We can only hope and pray that everything is okay. However, in the meantime, at least we can console ourselves that if you use the new offer code Love Meeple, L O V E. M -E -E -P -L -E, you will be able to get an extra 5% discount on all your goods ordered from Firestorm Games, whether that be from their Cardiff, Newport, or New 
Swindon Store. And remember, that offer is also available online at www.firestormgames.co.uk. Firestorm offer free worldwide shipping on orders over £40. Some exclusions may apply. So for the main part of the show, obviously as we uh, um, as we kind of uh, kind of said, when we get a one of our Patreon listeners on, uh, we ask, okay, what do you want to talk about? And there were a couple of options, one of which contained the word Brexit, so we thought we'd avoid that like the plague, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's yeah. getting a bit too close to home now. Um, yeah, <laughs> yes. um, <clears throat> however. Uh, one of the subjects that uh, that David said, oh, I, we could chat about this, really intrigued me. Uh, because it's one of those games that I keep looking at and kind of going, hmm. Now, it's, it's, I think it is fair to say that uh, Games Workshop have been having something of a renaissance in the last few years. Uh, but I think well, basically since they changed their CEO, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 and they've yeah, and they've actually reconnected with the gaming community. And as part of that, they've been releasing several different boxed games. Uh, and in the past, we've talked about. I mean, yeah, boxes of various. I mean, you see boxed games, you know, boxes of various sizes. I mean, you know, I mean, you talk about box games, and then you took, yeah, you pick up Adeptus Titanicus. Yeah, it's a, bo- a box. <laughs> it's, it's a box game, but yeah, you know, box boxes of various sizes. Adaptus Titanicus, a box bigger than Mister Hobbs, uh, <laughs> uh, and you know, you then you got things like Kill Team and stuff. And one of those box games was Shadespire. Yep, Shadespire. Shadespire. It is, is Shadespire. Um, but apparently, apparently, I, I, I am I am massively behind the times because. Uh, uh, we have moved on from Shades, from Shadespire, uh, and we're now into the realms of something called Night Vault. So, but now this is, this kind of intrigues me because it is effectively a board game, but Games Workshop producing a board game with Games Workshop miniatures. What is this all about, and is it worth your interest? And uh, yeah, I'm intrigued. Uh, so, and apparently David turned and said, "Oh, I could talk about this." So, David, let's talk. Let's talk about uh, Warhammer Underworlds. Okay, so first off, uh, I know you mentioned Lord of the Rings, but you haven't mentioned much else about Games Workshop. So, is, so um, is uh, you know, I mean, have you been into Games Workshop over the years? Um, I suspect like quite a, few, a number of people, I have had this love hate relationship with. With, with Games Workshop, mm-hmm. um, yeah. I was there at the start of Warhammer. Um, got the first edition box when it came out back in the early eighties, and got every set of Warhammer after that. But it was always the fantasy side of things I was interested in. Uh, I, I I would never say I was a a, a a massive Warhammer player. I may have played it over the years, but I never did any tournaments or anything like that. I was never interested in that side of the game, but I mean, I did like the the background, the fluff that went with the old world, etc. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I stuck with Warhammer all the way through to Eighth Edition, and then they blew the world up. And yeah, that wasn't that wasn't great. And uh, yeah, I, I, at that time, I thought, what the hell? You know, I've collected all these books over the years, etc. I've got all the army books, and I was, you know, I was really a bit miffed with with Games Workshop. You know, I mean, forty k had never interested me. I was never into into that side of their hobby. Um, I missed out on the likes of Mordheim and Necromunda when they came out in the nineties. The nineties was not a great time for me wargaming wise, and uh, lots of things happening in my life at that time, which meant I didn't really do a lot of um, wargaming. So I missed those. I mean, Man of War was a set that I never ever never ever um, picked up. I did have Battlefleet Gothic for a wee while and kept it and then sold it for lots of money uh, eventually, but uh, because I'd never played it, you know, I'd had got it. I mean, spaceship combat's always been something I was interested in, but whatever. So yeah, when when they blew up the old world and brought out the 
Age of Sigmar, etc. I thought, nah, that doesn't do it for me. Doesn't do it for me. We, I mean, the Thaggers, we played a couple of the skirmish games, which were okay, you know, and we, we talked about, you know, maybe running a campaign um, with it, but it just, it just petered out. We didn't really take it very far. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, but still all through this time, I still got the GW newsletter. It still popped up on the inbox, etc. And, and uh, you know, they they then mentioned this game called Shadespire, or, or more properly, Warhammer Underworlds Shadespire. And um, I thought, okay, what's what's the story with this? And it had miniatures in it, but it was, it is a board game. It, it You play on a board. Um, right. So this was... You know, this was interesting. This is not something I'd seen them do before uh, from that. So it was released October 2017. So I picked up a box of the core set. And uh, the other thing that, that immediately appealed to me was the fact that although there was miniatures, there was only eight miniatures in the box. You had two warbands, uh, one Stormcast Eternals warband had three models in it. And then you had the Garrick Reavers warband, which had five models in it. And I thought, Oh you wow! Know, okay, that's... I could, you, you, you can. I yeah. could easily paint those up, and I, and I did. I got them painted up, and uh, so yeah, it was the scale of the game that you know you weren't talking a high figure count uh, involved. But the other thing that that appealed to me, I mean, I've, as I've mentioned, I'm playing card game. Um, it's it, you know the game is based around the play of two different types of decks of cards, um, which you use. To, well, one deck is what you call the objective deck. One deck was the uh, is the power deck. So so these mechanics, you know, did interest me, etc. From that point of view. So yeah, I picked up the core set, looked at it, and you know, read through the rules. I mean, the rules are not, you know, uh, I think it's a thirty-two page rule booklet. But, but again, it's you know, a lot of it's the fluff. You know, it introduces. It's all set in the city of Shadespire. So I wasn't really too interested in that side of things because again, it was all Age of Sigmar background. So. Uh, you know, you can t- you can take the fluff or you can you can leave it, and I I've left the fluff from that point of view. Um, but you know, the rules you know seemed you know fairly easy to get into. It's got custom dice. It's got, as I mentioned, the the cards, and it's uh, and I say you play it on a board. So yeah, it's it's. I thought okay, this is quite good. When I picked up the core set, of course, what I didn't appreciate was that you know, typically in GW fashion, their plan was to release. Additional war bands, and and so soon after that, you know, other war bands came out. But again, you know, by this time I was pretty well hooked, and uh, I didn't really have any issue about picking up the extra war bands uh, as they came out. So, so yeah, so they released Shades Bar October seventeen. Uh, a further six war bands came out uh, initially for that set, and then uh, last October November, they brought out the new core set called Night Vault. Uh, and again, if you're interested in the fluff, this is now set below the this, this, this city of Shadespire. Um, and it's introduced some new mechanics uh, into the game, uh, but fully compatible with the first set. So so the story continues. And um, so far, they've released that core set plus four new war bands. So currently, I think we're sitting at about 14 war bands in total available right. to play the game. Okay. I mean, one thing I didn't appreciate is that. Night Vault has replaced Shadespire. You can't yeah. get a hold of Shadespire anymore. Yeah, I, th- I think it's well. I, I think it's pretty difficult. To, uh, you wouldn't get it from GW now. You might pick up the set uh, occasional a set from you know a retailer, etc. But yeah, Night Vault has replaced Shadespire as the core set. So what GW have done for those people that obviously didn't get into the didn't get the original core set is they've released the war bands as separate um, box sets. Oh, okay. And um, the the boards that came with the original box set, they've re- released separately, and also the decks of cards as well are unavailable. Oh. So, so even though you may not have got the original um, Shades by core set, the the figures and the um, the, um, the 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 cards and so on, etc., are now available separately. So you can pick them up that way. So, um, but yeah, Night Vault is is the current core set. I presume. Later on this year, they may come out with a new set, whether they call that Garden Shed or whatever, I don't know. But um, yeah, presumably there'll be another set coming out. I mean, they seem they seem quite keen to push push the this whole Warhammer Underworlds um, series. Um, I mean, they describe it as the ultimate competitive miniatures game, and it's they they do seem to have quite a a, 
a thriving organised play um, set up with their in their stores, etc. And again, you know that side of things you know, doesn't really interest me. I mean, if, if I you know, if I got the chance, I would probably would go along and, and maybe take part. But it's it's never been the driving force behind my interest in the game. I just like the fact that you know it's a quick game to get into, plays out quickly. I mean, you can have two or three games in a in a in a, a gaming night easily, you know, and Again, like any good game, no, no two games are the same. So you get a different play experience every time you, you play it. So so yeah, that's that's really what, what, what attracted me to the game as such. Um, okay. The out and, and so on. Right, okay. So it's a board okay. game. We've established that. Uh, yeah. So, okay, if, if, if you've never heard of it before, okay, so say it's a board game. So what does a board look like? Is it, okay. uh, 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 you know, I mean, is it, uh, you know, is it like a chessboard or are we just, but b- with artwork or what? How, how no, you, what you've got here is, um, you, you, with the core set, you get two boards, which you join together to form your, your playing surface. Okay. Um, they're his, you know, they've got hexes on them. Um, and the, what you can do is basically you can align the boards in different ways to form a different layout each time. You can have them, um, long side. Uh, together, or you can have them short side together, or you can you know have them slightly off center. As long as in where the boards touch, there are three complete hexes. Then oh, that okay. is a val- that's a vol- valid uh, layout for your boards. So, so yeah, so you get a bit of variety from that. And the boards themselves are double sided. Mm-hmm. So the the idea is that each player brings with them one half of the board. Okay, so um, that board has two sides on it. You roll off to see who gets to pick the the first board, and then the person who wins the roll gets to uh, place the boards in such layout as they as they see fit. So the boards themselves, I mean, they're uh, coloured boards, the um, you know usual GW quality, you know, pretty uh, solid uh, uh, boards from that point, cardboard uh, from that point of view. Um, they show different types of terrain. There are, there are what are called block hexes which basically stop any movement, etc. Uh, the Night Vault set brought out lethal hexes, which cause damage if you enter them and things like that. So again, that just adds a wee bit of tactical variety to, to your gaming's okay. that point of view. Um, so that's your boards. Um, as I mentioned, the core set comes with two war bands. So with the Night Vault set, you have the um, the wizardy type um, Stormcast Eternals called the Stormsire's Curse Breakers. Again, three models. Um, again, your typical GW figures. Uh, one of the things the push together type models. Oh, right. So okay. In theory, no, no gluing required. Yeah. Although I would always, you know, stick a wee bit of glue in there just to to give them a bit of rigidity. Um, and they're up against the thorns of the Briar uh, War bands. So, um, they actually have quite a few figures in their war band. We've got seven figures in their war band. So. So it's a slightly large, larger uh, war band this time. Oh. So, so, uh, he, so, he, sorry, we'll come on to this in a second. So, so, so it's a case we say, oh, well, well, one war band is three models, one is seven. So it's a case of uh, when you choose a war band, they you have a set number of models. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's again uh, quite important because the 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 content of each war band is fixed. It's not as if you could introduce okay. your own models that you have, um, you know, and use them. No, each war band is fixed. So you've got, um, and say in the storm and the um, the curse breakers war band, there's three figures. There's Storm Sire himself, who's sort of the leader of the band, and he's got a, a couple of um, cohorts to to fight with him. And that's your three, you know, your war band, because each figure in the war band has a card which has all the stats on it for that particular figure. Okay. So so those are fixed, and it's the same for all the other uh, war bands oh. as well. They're fixed, fixed figures. So. Fixed ha- can you can you end up in a situation where you have two of the same warband facing off against each other? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, again, no big issue with that. You know, from from a gaming point of view, um, stats for each figure obviously will be identical. But of course, where the, where the um, the variety comes into it is the use of the of the card decks, and you know, we'll, we'll come on to them sure. in a minute. But that's what gives you your variety. So. Um, each each warband figure has um, a, 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 a stat card, and on that stat card will give you the details of the the um, the movement, the the um, 
hit points or wood points as we call it, uh, the defense factor and you know the attacks that that figure can make. Mm-hmm. And then each each um, uh, card has a, an inspired side. So you start off as a with your, your normal card um, side up. Um, so you know I'm looking at Garrett Gorebeard. He's one of the original figures, and um, so his movement would be four hexes. He has four wound points, and he rolls one dodge dice in defense. Uh, and I'll speak about the dice in a minute. His attack um, is called the Blood Drinker Axe. He rolls two attack dice, and if he hits, he does two wounds. But on the other side of the card is his inspired form. So each each warband has a special trait that if that trait is triggered, you inspire that particular figure or the whole warband in some cases. So again, in Garrick's case, um, his inspired condition is that if at least three fighters have been taken out of actions, you, you know, in that in that particular game. Then he flips over to his inspired side. So that's, you know, it's encouraging the combat, you know, the, you know, getting figures taken out of action, et cetera. And, and as a result, his warband becomes stronger the more casualties are caused in, in the game. The other warbands have different conditions that trigger. So it again just adds that different tactical approach to the, to the game. You know, you have to try and get your inspired condition so that your, your fighters will become better and, uh, you know, hopefully be able to to take out your their opponent's war band before they become inspired. Hmm. That's interesting. So the, these cards sound interesting because it's it's a bit of deck building. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's the yeah there, it's it is a deck building game. I mean, um, there are two decks that you have to build. You are you have your objective deck and your power deck. So, that, the whole premise of the game is you know is to earn glory glory points and the person who has the most glory points at the end of the game is declared the winner. So you get glory points in two ways. One by taking enemy models out of action. You'll get a glory point each time you do that. And the other way is through the objective deck. So each time you achieve an objective, you you, you play that particular card and you, uh, you'll earn a number of glory points based on, on what that card um, says. So um, the objective deck you, it has to be 12 cards exactly and um, in the cards that are provided in the core set um, you, you get a couple of starter decks which are already pre-made so you can use them to start with until you get the hang of the game and then there's a couple of expansion decks you can add into the to the mix just to give you that that um, different variety and flavour mm-hmm. um, but also the cards are split into warband specific cards and generic cards so the warband cards are only usable by both that particular warband. The generic cards can be used by any of the warbands. So from the deck building point of view, you can use cards from any set if they're generic for any particular warband, um, which is probably one of the, you know, the, the attractions for it from a deck building point of view, because it gives you a, a wide canvas. But then, of course, leads to that, you know, the criticism, well, if you want a particular card, it may only be in, in a particular set of, a uh, particular warband set, because each warband as it's released comes with a, a deck of cards, some warband specific, others generic. And if you want a particular generic card, you may have to go and buy that particular warband just to get that card. So that's that's maybe one of the, the weaknesses of the game. But then, you know, they did that with the X-Wing and, and games like that. So that, yeah. you know, that model has been used before. <laughs> yes, successfully as well. Indeed, yeah, 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 yeah. It certainly hasn't put me off buying the the war bands because you know again, I quite like to have you know the the full variety of cards. But I mean, I think mm-hmm. by the time that the the, the Night Vault sets are released, there'll probably be about six hundred different cards available. Oh wow! Some of which obviously are objective cards, others are the power cards. So so you will have a wide choice of cards to pick from, and if you enjoy deck building, then you know you'll you're, you're all set. Um, I'm a bit, again, a bit lazy when it comes to deck building. I mean, I'm quite happily to, to net deck, as they call it. I may quite happily pinch other people's ideas because I don't really have a lot of time to sit and think about these things. But um, yeah, I mean, it is part of the the, the, the game. And uh, you know, when I have done it myself, you know, it's been quite a good quite a good exercise just to pour through over the cards and try and work out, okay, does that card go well with that warband and things like that. Right. Okay, so so you mentioned it's a... a, a... A competitive, a competitive uh, game. That's what it's, it's designed as. So, so is it almost kind of effectively like 
team gladiatorial combat. Yeah, yeah, I think that's quite a good a description of it. Um, in fact, actually, I'm just looking at the Shade Spire box, and again, when it, uh, on the box, it's it describes itself as a fast-paced game of tactical arena combat. So, so obviously, oh. when it first was released, that was sort of the the diary behind it. So, yeah, it's a it's an arena. You obviously can never leave the board. I mean, the board is is the is the field of combat from that point of view. So, uh, and it's not a, it's not a big playing surface. Um, I think I measured it. Um, yeah, the the boards are about ten inches wide by about sixteen inches long. So oh, right, okay. You put those two together. I mean, it's it's it'll fit on a two by two table, no problem yeah. at all. Um, although I suppose if you go long lengthways, I might might cause a problem that way. But uh, yeah, it's quite a compact area from that point of view. Well, okay, so it's you're saying it's pretty self contained. So whether you buy a base set or uh, or if you buy uh, say uh, an expansion pack of a um uh, for a warband uh other than the uh the miniatures themselves what else do you get in an expansion pack in the expansion pack you'll you'll get the cards for that particular warband and a set of generic cards so um so yeah i mean i think Although you, you, there are boards available separately, you you will always need one board. Right. So the, the idea is that the two players come together, each one bringing a board uh, to form the, the the battle area. So you definitely need a board to play the game. The warbands themselves come with the figures, and they come with I think it's usually sixty cards, um, twenty nine uh, specific cards to that warband, thirty one generic cards. You also need the custom dice. Right. Now again, they I think they are available separately. So each, well, certainly yes, they are. What am I saying? Each warband uh, you can buy their particular flavour of dice. So you shock me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> I mean, the corset mean... corset comes with 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 the dice, but you know, if you go all in, you'll buy each warband. You'll buy the the dice that goes with that particular warband, and you know, you can even buy sleeves for the cards. For that particular warband as well. So yeah, they, they they've thought it all from that point of view. You can really pimp your warband up by getting the the custom the, the dice and and sleeves to go with the warband. Which yeah, I have. That's a long as that. And indeed not. So so I mean, scale of miniatures. I mean, I, I mean, looking at what I've seen from the stuff for Age of Sigma, this stuff is getting quite big now. Yeah, yeah. These are these are chunky figures. Um, they're definitely your heroic 32 mil scale figures. I mean, the Stormcast Eternals look absolutely massive. But even the the Goblin Warband that came out um, recently, I mean, the Goblins there are quite chunky guys. So yeah, they're definitely on the large side. Which again, I suits the suits the the game fine because they're such a low moral count. You know, the the figures you know, you know do stand out because they're quite large. But yeah. I mean, GW again always thinking of you know of a trick. The warbands can be used for Age of Sigmar skirmish or or the the battle game, uh, so you can get your battle tomes etc. Or Age of Sigmar if if that's what you want to do. But it, yeah, it is, it is interesting. I thought, I thought when you said it, it's interesting that it's only compatible one way. That you can't go. Oh, well, I, I've got I've got an Age of Sigmar warband. I'd like to play it in. Yeah. I'd like to yeah. play it in, uh, in in Night Vault, for example. Uh, no, you can't. You yeah, can't. No. No. Right. Okay. I mean, I suppose you could. You could use a Stormcast f- figure and say that's Severin Steelheart, who's the leader yeah. of the first war band, but it just wouldn't be because the card has a picture of Severin Steelheart on it, and it's got a picture of that particular model on yeah. that. So, so it's yeah. It, it, yeah, you're pretty well. I think you're pretty well tied to the to the models that come with the game. Uh, so yeah, from that point of view, it's it's they've they've kept a lid on it. Okay, so, shall we just run through the sort of turn sequence? Hmm. It sounds good yeah. Idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, like I say, you, you each need a board. You each need a warband. You each have your two decks of cards, etc. So, once you've set the boards out, um, there's a process for setting out objective tiles, and then you roll to see who deploys first. The warbands mm-hmm. then deploy onto the boards. There's starting hexes marked on each board, so you have to deploy in one of those hexes with your with your figures, uh, and then you roll for initiative to see who takes the first activation because there's basically the game lasts three rounds and uh, 
Um, and in each round, each player gets four activations. So it's it's I, you, I go, you go from the point of view of each round, but you roll for an initiative to see who takes the you know take the first activation. And the person who wins the, act, the, the initiative roll can choose who goes first or second. So you do your initiative roll, you decide who's going to take the first activation, and that player then decides what action the activation they're going to make for the turn. So there's a, diff- a number of choices. You can move a fighter, you can make a charge action with a fighter, you can attack with a fighter, you can place a fighter on guard, which is a special status that um, you can give a fighter that gives them advantages in defense, or you can draw a card from your deck instead. Um, so if you ha- you know if you if you want to draw additional cards, then you've got to use an activation to do that, or you may choose to pass. You know that's the other option as well. So you the, you take an activation. At the end of that activation, then you have the opportunity to play your power cards from your power deck. So your power deck, um, um, you know, I mentioned the object today. It has to be a, um, twelve cards exactly. Your power deck has to be a minimum of twenty cards, and in that deck, you have a mixture of upgrades, which, and also you have what's called what well, they now call them the gambits, um, but it's, uh, ploys. And with the Night Vault set, they've introduced spells. So your power deck is made up of a combination of these cards, and at least half, uh, no more than half of the cards in your power deck can be gambits. So the ploys are tactical cards you can play to give yourself an advantage in combat or in movement and things like that. Spells, again, can can do different things, whether they're combat oriented or uh, help with movement and things like that. So so you go into the power phase, the player who has the initiative uh, or has, has taken the activation plays, gets to play their power card first. Then the, the opposing player can then play a power card themselves and that carries on until both side, both players agree to pass. And then when that happens, then the player, the next player, takes their activation, and you repeat that process four times until you get to the end phase. And in the end phase, okay. that's when you try and score your objectives with um, your glory points and things like that. Right. So it's alternate figure activation. Yeah, yeah, alternate figure. Uh, you know, there might be a card that might allow you to to do something out of the sequence, but that's more the exception than the rule. Um, it's very much a case of you activate one figure, decide what you're going to do with that, and then your opponent then gets to do something with his activation. So do you have a hand of cards? Yeah, you... yeah. Okay. So so, so, so you so you, you give a... yourself a hand of cards from each of your objective and your power deck. So right, your objective okay. deck, you'll deal three cards, and your power deck, you'll deal yourself five cards. There right. is a mulligan rule that you can basically decide to discard all your cards, you know, that, the, the cards from a particular deck. So it's not a case you can discard one card, you've got to discard the whole lot. And you're not, your discard pile does not come back into play. So again, you've got to choose wisely whether or not you want to get rid of a, your hand or not. So, so you've got to be careful about that. Um, but yeah, you play your, you, you draw five cards from your power deck. You play those cards through, through the, the turn. And at the end of the turn, you can replenish back up to five. You can hold more than five in your hand. But, you know, if, if you've got more than five cards in the end phase, unless you discard to, you know, back down to five, except you can't draw more cards than that. You can only, you can only draw back up to five in that respect. Right. So let me just get this right in my head. So I, I've, it, it's the beginning of the turn. I've drawn the um, eight cards into my hand. Yeah. And then we have an activation. So I can do something with a figure. At the end of that, I can then play a card. My opponent can play a card. We do that until we pass. And then we have another action, another activation. But we we haven't updated. We haven't drawn. You more haven't, cards. haven't drawn. You know that's it. You do not draw yes. cards again. Some cards might allow you to do that. So again, mm-hmm. your power cards might allow you to draw a card. For example, there's a, a card called. Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember. There's a card that you, you can play in reaction uh, to uh, your opponent, which allows you to draw two cards. So that's quite a good one to have because it brings more cards into hand. But basically, yeah, once you've dealt your initial hand for that round. You're stuck with it until the end phase when you replenish your hand at that point. So again, you know, it, it forces you into deciding what you want to do but, you know, with the hand, the cards that you've got. You've got to try and work out what's what's the best plays, you know, with you know, with the, the cards you've got and how to then interact with the figures on the board as a result of that. 
Yeah, so we've and we do that four times each. Four times each, yeah. Yeah, so that's eight individual activation and eight individual powers. Yeah. Step sequences. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Mm. Yeah. Because in each power phase, both players will get to play cards. So even though it's you know you're not the person that's just activated, you'll get to play a card. And again, the timing of the card play is quite important because some of the cards will say in the next phase this will happen. So you've got to make sure that when you play the card, it's going to be in the phase that will benefit you. So if it's, for example, you know, get plus one attack in the next phase, you would not play that at the end of your activation because the next activation will be your opponent's and that's the next phase. So you've got to read the card, make sure that you get the timing of these things right so that you get you know, the best benefit from it. Mm. That's, that's, mm. that's quite clever, actually. It, it takes a wee bit of getting used to. I mean, yeah. when we first start playing it, you know, the, you know, we were playing. All oh, right, I'm going to play this, and then you suddenly hang on. It's the next phase, and of course, it's your opponent's way to take the next phase. So you won't get. You know, if it's an attack action, mm. you will not get an attack in your opponent's activation. It's him that's doing the attacking or has the the, the opportunity to attack. So, so from that point of view, yeah, you've got to. to oh right, so so combat is. Sorry, I don't mean to come onto this, but combat isn't simultaneous. No, no. As I say, it's one of the activations you can do. So. Mm. You can, as I say, you can either move, you can charge, which is move and then attack, or you can do, take an attack act- activation, which basically allows a, a figure to, to carry out a combat. Um, but that is part, that is your activation. So it's not a case of each side, you know, um, attacks at the same time. It's it, that that is definitely an I go you go me- mechanic yeah. there. And so you're basically saying, okay, that's three turns. So so actually, the entire game is just twelve activations. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. you get you can draw back up to your three objective cards and your five power cards, and then once your decks are empty, that's it. You cannot. Oh, you, you don't reshuffle. Reflect. You do not reshuffle. That's good. Like, oh, timing is excellent. Oh, this is interesting. And is there a maximum number of cards you can hold in your hand? Nope, nope. You can okay. hold more than. I uh, say so you can start. You start over three and five, and you can draw more than that. But when it comes to the end phase, if you've got more than five cards in your hand, then you can discard as many cards as you want, but you're in doing that, obviously, they're going into the discard pile. You're not going to get them back. So you're then left with a choice. Well, do you hang on to the cards that I've got? Or do I, you know, I know there's a, a better card that would suit me still in the deck. So, but I need to get down to five cards. So you end up having to discard cards to hopefully then draw the card that you're looking for. So, yeah. Oh, right. So when, so, so during the end phase, you, you draw up to the eight cards again. So, if you've kept two cards, you would only draw, yeah. for example, six cards. Mm. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Oh, wow. And you do that three times. You do that three times, yeah. I mean, as I say, there's no, in the power deck, a, a minimum of 20 cards. Um, I've seen a lot of decks where they maybe have 22 or 24 in the power deck. So yeah. more cards to choose from. But then, of course, you want to then try and get an engine going whereby you'll get through that deck just that wee bit quicker to get to the to get to the cards that you know may be important for that particular phase of the game and things like that. So, so yeah, it, you know that's where the deck building aspect comes into it. What cards you you know let you cycle through your deck to to get the power cards that you want, and you know as I say, it's that choice of well, do I keep my hand or do I discard, knowing that once they've gone, they've gone. Mm. Yeah, because if you've got twenty cards and then you've got three rounds. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've 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 played in a few games where you know come the last phase and you've got no cards in your hand and you're thinking, uh, oh, yeah. you know, it's not not a great situation to be in. So yeah, you've got to time your play, card play carefully, and and decide when you know when to discard and when to try and hang on to the cards you've got. And it might be that again, because some of the cards are, uh, particularly the upgrade cards are can be specific to a particular uh, model. You could find that if that model's been taken out of action, you're sitting with a whole pile of cards that are, you know he could use, but he's not there anymore, so they're dead cards. So you've got to try and get them out of your hand as well. So you end up discarding them and 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 pulling a new hand of cards as a result. <laughs> Fiendish. Mm. Okay, so we've talked about activations, but obviously uh, one interesting thing here, we have custom dice. In two, yes, in two different dice. in two different colours. So okay, everybody loves custom dice. Oh yes, oh, uh, yeah. I'm assuming it's a case of these custom dice are used primar- uh, primarily in combat. 
Absolutely. Well, yeah. Use the dice for um, the term, what they call the roll off. So anytime you need to decide who does something first, an initiative or placing boards, etc., you roll four of these dice, and the person who scores the most criticals gets the choice then of what to do. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, but primarily the the purpose is for the combat, and you've got well, you've you know you say there's two color dice, and that's because you've got attack dice and you've got defense dice. Right. So with the core set, you'll get five attack dice and three defense dice. And when it comes to a combat, if a, if, a, if a model decides to activate and, and either charges or decides to attack, then on their card will tell you what their attack, what range their attack has to be, how many dice they will roll, and on that it will show you the symbol that they have to, to roll, and then how many damage win points they'll score if their attack successful. So for your attack dice, you have... Um, Primarily three symbols, uh, four symbols on it. Three, yeah, four symbols. In fact, five symbols. I'm looking at them. So you've got your critical side. So criticals say what they do in the ten. If you score a critical hit and your defender doesn't score a, a critical in, this, in response, you're going to do damage. You've got the hammer symbol. So some attacks you have to roll the hammer face up to to be successful. Um, others will have the cross swords, and then you've got the support side. So in a combat, if you've got one figure more than your opponent counting as support, then if, an, a, if a, a support side comes up on the dice, then that counts as a success. And then there's the double support, where basically you've got two or more figures than your your opponent in, in the combat. Then if you roll a, a, a double support, that also counts as a success. So so again, yeah, placing the figures you know in the combat can be important, trying to get you know, an advantage of figures helps increase the number of sides on the dice that will give you successes, as opposed to just rolling the the, the hammers and the swords. Because on the dice, there's only one side with the cross swords. Right. So you've got a one in six chance of success, only you know, normally with that, if you're looking for swords. The hammers yeah. appear on two sides, so one third chance. So figures that, you know, that are attacking with hammers as the, the result they're looking for have got a slightly better chance of, of hitting as a result of that. So again, you know, just looking at one of the cards here, I mean, Garrick, um, just because he's a card I've got out, um, his attack on his normal side of his card, uh, he has to he gets to roll two attack dice, and he's looking for hammers. So you roll your dice, and if hammers come up, then potentially he has, you know, he's scored a hit. But then the opponent will roll their defense dice, and the defense dice have got slightly different faces because, in addition to the supports and the critical that I've mentioned, you have the shields and the dodge faces. So. The Stormcast Eternals, when they roll the defense dice, they're looking for shields to come up, uh, up face up. Uh, the Reavers, the Garrix Reavers, they're looking for dodge dice. So each, you know, taking the Stormcast as an example, each shield that they roll will cancel one of the hits that their opponent has made. Mm. Okay. Criticals, again, you know, trump everything. So if your attacker rolls, say, for example, two hammers, and you're rolling one defense dice, then you've got to roll a critical, because the critical will trump all of those attack dice. So they will cancel out the attack dice if you roll a defense dice critical. So, yeah. again, it gives you that, you know, that, you know, that chance of you know, at least trying to avoid taking damage, even though you're only rolling one defense dice and your opponent's just rolled two hits against you. If you roll a critical, you'll cancel that, that attack. Um, but if the attack's successful, it'll do damage according to the, the number of win points it scores, and your um, your defending card will then suffer that damage, and you have a couple of tokens on the card to to, to signify that he's taking damage that from that attack. I quite like the idea of having different symbols for different types of attack. It does mean that obviously, if you're doing a hammer attack, you roll the double swords. That doesn't count as anything. Uh, you you said it's five. The, there's five symbols, so does that mean there's a there's a uh, blank? There's no blank side, no, no, not as such. But again, if you you know, if you roll a a support symbol and you've got nobody in support, that's 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 effectively a blank side as far as you're concerned. Yeah. So each symbol will do something for you, but you've got to make sure that you know that you you've got you've set up your attack in the best possible way to get the most out of the dice when you roll it. Right. Okay. So basically, uh, the the amount of dice that you're rolling determines whether the attack goes through. What damage you score is based on the weapon you're using. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's right. Yeah. So ah, okay. I mean, some characters will have a choice of attacks. So depending on the range, etc., you might decide to use one attack because you can attack it one, uh, two, or three hexes away. And um, they tend to do less damage if they're, if they're successful. But then you know you're you're not having to go into close combat when you're as a to do that damage. Um, but most characters will have just one attack available to them, and that will th do a fixed amount of damage uh, from that attack. Playing upgrades, you know, on your character, on your models, etc., though, will, will maybe increase the the damage that you do, uh, or playing different weapons on the character again gives you a choice then of what attacks that you can use. Right, and you say at the end of each, at the end of your eight activations, you then have an end phase where you count up objectives and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So the objectives, you know, come in different flavors, etc. Some are holding particular hexes on the board. So I mentioned that you know at this moment when you're setting up the game tiles on the, on the board. So if you're a figure and it's standing on objective hex one and you've got that you know, you've got a particular objective card in your hand, then you'll play that uh, at the end in the end phase and that will score you one glory point. And then the glory points can be used to buy the upgrades that you equip your characters with. All right, so so it's a, so it's a trade off but I'm, I'm assuming is it whoever gets the most glory points at the end of the game wins. Yeah, you do. But you, you know, spending glory points does not lose those glory points for you. So, oh, okay. Spend the okay. glory points to upgrade your characters, and they still count towards your final total. Oh, we played that wrong okay. the first couple of games. We played it, and then suddenly, I think again, I'd been rereading the rules. And I thought, hang on, you, you know, you don't lose those glory points. You keep them. So, so that totally changed the whole, you know. Yeah. way we approach the game because yes yes so basically why wouldn't you spend them absolutely you know yeah. you, you, if they're there for you to spend and you've got the, the upgrades that will help yeah you're going to you'll spend them but you you know that they'll still count towards your total at the end of the day mm -hmm. <laughs> oh well going through isn't it and so is that basically so is that basically it it's it's because it's, it's, it's arena combat so it's essentially get out get bash stuck your in. opponents yeah oh i'm saying bash your opponent actually that's that's unfair because there's quite a few war bands that rely on movement to, you know, claim, for example, objective hexes, or some some of the objective cards, you know, will say, you know, score this many object uh, glory points if all of your models are in your opponent's half, or if you've prevented your opponent entering your, you know, your board, uh, things like that. So, so you can build, you know, different different strategies based on those cards. You know, you can go for a you can go for your offensive warband where you just get lots of glory points for killing things and all the rest of it, or you can go for you know the cards that will give you glory points for getting into areas of the board. Uh, I mean, there's one card that will you will score glory points if there are no models next to each other. So you try and set up your the you know the you know the the, the phase that uh, when it comes to the scoring end phase, none of your none of the models are next to each other, and you'll score glory points as a result of that. And so, yeah, I mean, you can sometimes see that ha happening, and you can see, you can work out that you know, you know that he, your opponent's got that card, and uh, there are cards that you can do to try and scupper that. And there's cards that let you move out all the figures. And there's a, a card called Great Concussion, which is now being banned for competitive play, but you know, in casual play, basically, if you play that card, it allows you to push every figure one hex. So, you know, you can play that, and that'll help you. You know, either thwart that particular scoring card or actually might might help you and score it yourself if you've got that card in your hand right okay S scenarios doesn't really count because it actually it's all based on the objective deck that you have built yeah yeah they they, they brought out in the christmas edition last of white dwarf last year they brought out a a, a one-off scenario where they um they give you a card for the well they call it the chaos gargant now but it's the fate of the, the giant model so that's the only you know scenario I've seen. Basically, that you, know, you can gang up against the giant and try and take it out, etc. But at the same time, you're still hitting each other. It does allow multiplayer as well. Three or four players can play a game. We've never tried that, but you know the rules do allow for multiple boards to be placed, and you know you have more than two players. Okay, so do, so does that mean that again each player has a board, so you'll potentially have three yeah. or four, four? Oh. I have a you know a board size you know four boards in, in size in that respect yeah yeah and the, some of the objective cards will score differently if there are three or four players 
playing. So, you know, if a card says, you know, score this amount of glory points if you if there are five fighters out of action in a multiplayer game it might have to be seven players uh, seven yeah. um, characters out of action as a result the other question is since we've got fixed war bands i'm assuming there is not much of a campaign system as such no i mean they, they, there's a campaign ladder rules in the in the book but that's it i mean it's a, it's a ladder format rather than any sort of um, progression wise of building up your card there's no rpg element in it from that point of view of you know Right, so, so, so it's, it's not about building your warband at all. It's it's simply a case of uh, effectively you're doing a ladder campaign based on how on on on, on scoring well, well winning matches. Yeah, got you. Yeah. Winning matches, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, again, you know, I suppose the appeal from my point of view was, you know, it's a game you can throw down the table, you play, and you can get you know, say, a number of games per night. And that's 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 where the fun and enjoyment's coming from. Not I'm not looking long term from a campaign point of view or anything like that. That's, you know that was that wasn't a consideration. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. It, it's interesting that they. I mean, they're pushing it for the campaign for the sort of um, events and and the uh, competitive play. Yeah, you can see it was fit right into that because what does a, a a game take to us? Forty-five minutes. Um, I mean, I, I, well, for, I mean, forty-five minutes. Yeah, if you've got a couple of guys who, oh, when I say guys, I, I mean that in you know in general neutral terms. Um, you know, if you've got a couple of players who know what they're doing, you know, you know, then yeah, games can take you know thirty minutes, forty-five minutes because it's you know it's, it's it's quite flowing. I mean, you, you move or yeah. you combat. Actually, your activation phases can go quite quickly. The player cards can go quite quickly. So yeah, yeah. You can set. I mean, I think in their tournaments, their organised play, what the 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 format is three games. Uh, you get an hour and a half to play three games, and you know, um, if you know if, if somebody wins two games, then regardless of how many glory points they've scored, if they've actually won the two games, then you know that's they win that round. And um, but I think if if you if you have one game each and you go into the third game, it, you know it will not, it may come down to the glory points if that game ends up tied, etc. So. So the three game format is is certainly used for competitive play, as far as I'm aware. But um, mm. yeah, as I say, an hour and a half is what they usually allow for for playing that sort of um, number of games. It's it's a different concept for GW. I must say, I, 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 I think it, yeah, I can't think of anything similar to to this that they've done before. I mean, you know what the thing, the immediate thing that immediately struck me: this is Games Workshop doing Fantasy Flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, good, that's a good comment actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the whole way through, it's like this, this just doesn't sound like a, a, a what, what a, a typical games workshop game because, you know, every a, like, everything is different. You know, it doesn't yeah, tie into any. It doesn't tie into any. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, the, as I say, the the models are you know the the, the war bands are based on the Age of Sigmar background, etc. But as I said, I mean, I I haven't paid any attention to the fluff that goes with the game. I mean the. The first couple of pages of the rule book tell you about, you know, the you know, shade spire of the city, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but I, I don't think I've actually read it. So, if you're not interested in the fluff, it, you know, it doesn't change the game in any way whatsoever. Mm-hmm. You know, you can play the game without having any knowledge about Age of Sigmar or the whatever they call the, the world now. I can't, I couldn't even tell you what the the new world is called because um, it just doesn't hold any interest to me. But you know, I enjoy the game. Yeah, I enjoy the game. Just- because you're approaching it as a as a game. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's it. I'm playing it as a game. I, you know, I, um, I mean, I, I I like to collect the war bands. I like to have the variety that you know each war band gives you. You know the different you know models. I mean the models are. I, I, I mean they're cracking models. I mean they really paint up really well. I mean the goblins have got their fanatic. I mean what's not to like? You know when you've got oh, a fanatic yeah. and they've got squigs as well. So yeah. You know that there's you know the war bands do have a different you know different variety different different tactical things that they can do as I say the inspired conditions for each war band are different so you know again you know makes you have to think about what you need to do to get your um, war bands inspired uh, you know for example the orcs or the orcs as they call them but I always call them orcs I mean I'm not going to change now to inspire an orc war band you know you've got they've got to take one wound so it encourages them to get into combat take the damage and then they flip over to the inspired side and that makes them you know beefier and and uh, yeah. uh, and more dangerous to your opponent um, so, 
Yeah, angry. You wouldn't yeah. like them when they're angry. angry. Uh. So, what's the sort of pricing structure here then? Um, the course, I think, retails at GW at forty quid. I am, almost... I am shocked by that. I was because when you were <laughs> describing it, I was kind of going, okay, this is going to be fifty, sixty quid. Yeah, no, it's forty quid. I think for the bit for the course set. Obviously, your online retailers, you know, will discount yeah. that. So you'll. I mean, I'm. I. I did not pay forty quid for the course sets. In either case, I'm, I think I paid about thirty-two, thirty-three. Uh, the war bands themselves, again, retail individually round about. I think it's eighteen pounds if you buy them GW. Um, and again, on time, you know, online yeah. you'll get cheaper elsewhere. Um, they they've just released a, a a new set of boards for for the current set and uh, they haven't arrived yet but i think they're they would normally be about 12 pound each or i think no, i think again 15 pound gw i think i got them from magic mm-hmm. Mouse for about 12 pound but yeah. i bought two because you know i want my opponent to have the option of obtaining because i mean i play with the boys and all the rest of it um you know i've got you know i've got two of everything as yeah. far as the boards are concerned i have i've got all the war bands released to date and don't tell anybody, but I do proxy cards. So if somebody wants to use a particular card and that's in somebody else's deck, we'll just say, okay, just proxy that card so that you you, know, you can use that card in your in your deck. I mean, I wouldn't go to the extent of buying two or three warbands just to have, because again, in the deck building side of things, you can only have one version of each card, one copy of each card. Oh, so you can't God. have multiple ah. cards of the same, you know, the same um, stat or the same type. Um, so again, you know that restricts well, hardly restricts you when there's 600 cards to choose from. But as I say, there are you can only have one of a particular card in your deck. There's some um, there's, there's a bit of 3D scenery, Night Vault Arcane Hazards, which is something introduced. You say introduced by Night Vault, wasn't it? The hazards. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, with with the blocked hexes that I mentioned, um, and basically on the board, they're just sort of bla- like blank. Oh, they're hexes, but they've got a, a, a an outline in, around them that sh- indicates that they're blocked. Yeah. So the arcane hazards is basically it's three D terrain. So mm. just in, emphasize. I mean, I actually built my own three D terrain. I, I bought a box of um, ruins um, and just you know bashed bashed them up, put them on MDF hex bases, and use that. Yeah, I got the hazards when they came out. Um, but actually, I'm not, I'm not overly daft on them. And this, you know, it's, you know, they're not essential for the gameplay at all. Because mm. the, the blocked hexes are marked on the board anyway, so you know which hexes to you are, uh, are out of play or, or dangerous to you. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, it, it, this is one thing, again, you've you got eight, uh, you got eight custom dice, six quid. On games workshops, uh, uh, yeah. Um, on games <laughs> workshops, six quid for eight custom dice. Is this? Uh, yeah, am I looking at the right website here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what they charge. That's what they charge. That is. I, oh. Yeah, and they've um, they've they've got a side set up as well, for, which has got a deck builder in it, and sort of um, start deck so you can um, what they suggest and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, it seems to be quite a lot of. I think, in fairness, they put a lot of thought into it. I mean, um, I tried to find out who the designer was. You will not mention, you will not find who the designer is on in any of the rule books. I actually found it from Board Game Geek. It's a guy called David Sanders, who apparently is the game designer. It's not a name I recognise from GW lore, etc. But as I say, I haven't really been keeping tabs of of what else they've been doing in the world. But um, yeah, if he's responsible for it, and then he's he's come up, I think, with a a really clever little game in the you know in in the in this format, I mean, it's it's expanded hugely with you know with the number of warbands etc that have come out. But each of the warbands that have been released, they, they seem to be quite well. I mean, you could play with a warband straight out of the box. You know, if you've got your board and dice, then the cards that come with that warband, you can easily put together a deck without having to look at any of the other cards that are available etc. You can play with what's in the box. The tournament guys will obviously say will scour the decks, you know, scour the cards to you know to build that killer deck if that's the right expression. Uh, which means you know you you would want to, you know to have access to the other war bands etc. But you know if you're not interested in that, if you like dwarves, then you'll buy the chosen axes war band. You'll get yourself a board, get yourself some dice, and then you just need your opponent to bring his board, his war band, his dice to the party, and and, and off you go. Clever. It is. It sounds 
really interesting. I've been, <laughs> uh, I've been, I've been looking at I've been looking at I'm, I'm sat on the games workshop site the whole way through this conversation, got, trying to think desperately trying to think of an excuse why I, why I shouldn't get at least give this a go because this looks. Com- something completely unexpected from Games Workshop, uh, and it looks, it sounds really, it sounds really interesting. Yeah, and it's, it's the sort of game that you and Josh would play, because... Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I say, um, I've got two sons, uh, Rory and Cameron. Cameron's my oldest one. He's currently in Edinburgh just now, so I've not really, you know, we don't see so much of him, but Rory's back home uh, just now, and uh, yeah, we'll quite happily sit down to a game of Warhammer Underworlds, I suppose, to give it its proper title. Well, I'll always still call it Shadespire. Um, but yeah, you know, and we can set up a game, you know, play a couple of games in an hour, you know, just keeps the, the fix going from that point of view. Cool. Cool. Thank you, David. That's. That... <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, David. Well, that's all right. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I have managed to cut some of it. Yeah, the, the faggers have um, some of the faggers have bought into it, um, so yeah. So they've they've been looking at their different war bands, etc. So so yeah, I'm you know the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned. And folk, you know, if you want to play it, then I'm always up for that. Yeah, you know, that... I, I, I'm not a tournament player, and as I say earlier, I'm, I'm not interested mm-hmm. in that side of things. Um, so you know, I don't see myself rushing off, you know, to do tournaments, etc. Although you know, I wouldn't say no to the, the odd one, but. Uh, that's never been the be-all and end-all as far as I'm concerned. I just want to have a sit down and have a, a game with my mates and, you know, a game, a game that will be different every time you play it as well. That's the other important thing, you know, because the cards are what gives it that, that endless variety of, of, of possibilities as far as, you know, the, the yeah. gameplay is concerned. Yeah. Um, I think what it's nice to see, again, on the, um, I'm on the Warhammer Underworld site, in the organised play section, you know, you can you can type in uh, an area, and it'll tell you where it's being played. So, for example, on Unil, you know, boards and swords play it. Uh, there's still games in Deeper, tabletop tyrant play it. So, there's yeah. You know, again, that's a nice thing to see from GW is they pushing independent gaming areas. Yeah. Again, that's something I haven't seen before. You know, they're not saying you have to go to a Games Workshop shop to play this. Yeah, yeah, I think in fairness to them, yeah, I think they've sort of definitely wised up to the idea that, you know, there are other game shops out there and, you know, they're encouraging. I mean, there are, um, you know, there are, you know, um, special cards, you know, promo cards that you can, uh, you can get when you take part in tournaments, etc. And that, that can be, you know, from your, from your local game store or from a GW, you know, yeah, run packs to to these stores. If you take part in the tournament, and I suppose that's maybe one reason maybe to take part in a tournament is because you'll pick up these alternative art cards or the the different tokens etc. in different colours etc. So you know from that point of view, the collectability side of things, you know, sort of nips me a wee bitty. But um, but, but yeah, I mean as I say, yeah. the, the, it's not solely the you know the the province of it has to be in a GW store. Mm. Yeah, it's it's good to see. It's ticking a lot of boxes. It is. It's scarily ticking a lot of boxes. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at oh I'm oh oh I'm looking at dwarves. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, the, dwar- the dwarves are great fun. The, you know, the dwarves are great fun. Um, there's a there's a uh, a YouTube uh, gang, the, the Agents of Sigmar that I that I watch, and uh, yeah, the, the, the crazy fuel. That crazy fuel <laughs> <laughs> is what they shout every time the. The dwarf leader of the war band misses. <laughs> this is usually what happens. <laughs> and there's only four figures in the war band. It would take you, you know, no time at all to get them painted up. And you know, you know, their spiky orange hair, etc. Or, I mean, I've seen them painted up different ways. I mean, you're not, you're not constrained to the orange hair. I've seen them painted with purple, blues, etc. <laughs> uh, all sorts of colours. David, thank you. That is, uh, that was really, that is really interesting. That is, re- no, I'm, no, I am, I am inc- very pleasantly surprised, uh, by that. And, um, mm, I, I, I foresee, 
I, I will see an experimental <laughs> purchase in mine. In, 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 what, 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 what should we say? For research, research purposes. Yes. Research, research purposes, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Indeed. I, I, yes, I, no. yes, I, I, I foresee it's... having an accident in my, in, in my non-too-distant future at this point. <laughs> oh, dear. Thank there you. you cool. Okay, well, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, it'll be time to wrap up. So as we return uh, to wrap up, uh, before we uh, we have some closing thoughts on the show, uh, there is one thing to ask, and that is, what has Dave bought this week? And not and not and not the David in question in in in, uh, in our current presence because he's already done his confession. But what has the anti luff been buying? And yes, he has been the anti luff. <laughs> uh, yeah, as you heard earlier, he's been leading me astray by purchasing Perry's and um, and using emotional blackmail to make sure that uh, that I uh, uh, that I accompany him in, in his madness. He, he, he subsequently turned around and said, "Yeah, these probably aren't going to get painted this year." I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, Bloody March! <laughs> I, I know, but yes, yeah, so he's done that, and then. The aforementioned, uh, uh, the aforementioned spare copy of Zombie uh, of, of of Black Plague. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe he got in before yep. me. You can fight over. <laughs> <laughs> well, your possession is nine tenths of the law. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dave, if you haven't got it yet, this is why, okay? Because uh, yeah. <laughs> of this conversation. Uh, but interestingly, actually, the one thing I will say is that the, the other thing, uh, the other thing, uh, uh, Mr. Hickman has been doing, which you may have spotted, because he, I mean, he doesn't, he, he doesn't tweet a lot about uh, about what he's doing, other than t- tweeting, you know, the odd game that we've played. He's been uh, right. Uh, he's been reorganising his games room. Yes. So first off, we um, we were both off during um, half term week. So uh, so uh, because basically I've got an estate girl. Um, he asked me if I wouldn't very uh, asked if I wouldn't mind um, being the Sherpa for the day, and we went and we popped down <laughs> to uh, and we popped down to IKEA uh, in Coventry actually. To pick up the uh, the f- the now infamous Kallax shelving, which apparently is is the uh, is the board game shelving of choice, or so I'm informed uh, by, <laughs> by lots of people, because um, it is actually ideal for uh, stocking board games, because uh, you know the the actual uh, it comes basically comes with a, a series of uh, rectangular. Yeah, it's it's not like a bookcase. It's it's uh, it's, it's like a, it looks like a shelving unit, except regular size holes, and they fit board games quite nicely. Apparently, so there we go. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> got, got a couple of those, and then uh, rather industriously, he went out and bought wood and wood for framing, and and he's built. Uh, by his this is this, this wasn't pre-made. He's he's kind of gone out and bought the wood separately and built all this. He's actually built a a painting table that kind of slots into this corner of the room. Uh, but, you know, it was basically it was a it's an alcove in the corner around the chimney breast. Okay, mm. and he said, right, okay, well, I want to leave that shelf there, and I want to leave that CD case in the corner for like little games and stuff. But I want to kind of fit a table in in, in the middle of it. So over the, over the course of about ten days, he, he he basically put this thing together, and he's built his own permanent painting station. Because so you know we were talking about the fact that Dave, the only way you're going to suss this is to is to get yourself a permanent painting station. <laughs> and and then he went and bought that, and so so bought that painting tray. Yeah, uh, he has now bought, uh, sorry, built a permanent painting station. And what is more, Good for him. what is more, I have now seen photographic evidence that he has been painting figures on it. 
<laughs> he showed me today he has finished some more of his Vikings. So, oh. s- outstanding work by Mr. Hickman. Yeah, he's uh, yeah he's really gone for it, and uh, yeah, all power to him. Uh, so you might have seen a t- you might have seen a picture that he, uh, I think he I think he tweeted a picture of um, of his completed station. Uh, he did. Station. Yes. Uh, so uh, so yes, he built by his own fair hand. Um, so, so so there you go. So that's what that's what Mr. Hickman has been doing. He's been he's been buying Perry Minich. Oh, and uh, continues to buy Rome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the Hill, one game Hill. system that I've I've stayed clear of. I, I, I'm, you know, listening to you guys talk about, I, I can feel it nipping at me, and I'm just saying no. I I, I cannot, I cannot do that. I just cannot get involved in that because, again, I I could just see myself being sucked away and lost forever. The new Bread and Circuses box set that's coming out looks very nice. Back, Beelzebub, back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just hold off, um, today because um, Mortal Gods will be out soon, and apparently it's much better. Uh, well, my pal Alan's bought that, bought into that, so I, I can get my fix that way if I, if I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, Alan's another one of these guys that um, you know, yeah, picks up a lot of things, and uh, yeah, never really gets to play it with him. But uh, yeah, he's picked up Mortal Gods, so uh, he was showing me pictures of the of the some of the stuff he's built up. So I'll need to get him around to play a game of that. Excellent stuff, excellent stuff. Wow, it's that time of night, Crikey, Here we are. It's uh, it's 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 gone past all. It's got it's gone past our bedtimes again. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. uh, but well, I, David, thank you very much for joining us on the show. It is it's it, this is one of the things uh, we were just saying uh, before we started recording. One of the reasons why um, we started doing this was the fact of we start hearing from people doing different things and hearing about stuff that are off our radar but actually look to be stuff that you know it's it's, well, it's, it's decent stuff but it's just off our radar so thank you for coming on no, thank, thank, you. thank you for having me thank you for having me yeah yeah it's been it's been brilliant to chat mate uh, thank, thank you. you so much and uh <sighs> Here we go. We have uh, we have a guest coming on, and <laughs> and and looks like they're going to be costing us some money. Well, yeah, it's, I, uh, I, I, costing I'm, you. I, I, I'm well, that. it's payback time, Neil, for all the things that you that you've spoken yeah. about in my shelves, and I. <laughs> this is it. Yes, chance for you. Yes, <laughs> from that point of view, I don't feel any sympathy. <laughs> yes. Revenge. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we get this a lot. <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, it's, it's it's been great to have you on, mate. Thank you so much for, uh, Thank you very much. for, for taking again, the time. Thanks. Really enjoyed it. So, um, all that remains is for us to say, to say David, thank you very much, uh, and uh, hope everything continues to go well. And uh, thank you for joining us uh, from from what is definitely not a shed in the middle of Scotland. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And it's a year, isn't it? It's a year. <laughs> Mr. Hobbs, thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you, Neil. Thanks for all the meeps. Yeah. Love uh, you all, meeps. Love you all. So, all that's left to said is uh, thank you to to everybody for listening. We hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, take care. Happy gaming. We'll speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. That's my life. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd had it before. <laughs> <laughs>
And finally, here you can also find details should you wish to support us by making a donation to the podcast. All this on the Meeples and Miniatures website, www.meeplesandminiatures.co.uk. The Meeples and Miniatures podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 3.0 unported license. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks.